Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Real Debaters. I'm Michael Petro, your host, and one of the debaters on the show. Welcome to our second Real Talk. For those of you just tuning in, these are the episodes that we're going to be pumping out on the off weeks. We don't do our normal debate show. So we're going to talk to some local film people. We're going to have some good conversations. We're going to play some games. It's a good time. So our first episode, we got to snag an interview with an old friend of mine. His name is BJ Vero. He's born and raised in Winnipeg. He's a writer, he's a director, he's a producer, he owns a production company, uh, he's an actor, but most importantly, what has to do with today's show is he's a stuntman. So we got to sit down with a local stuntman and talk to him about what it's like to get involved in that side of making movies, some of the stunts he's done, um, how does one start doing stunts? Do they just walk up to somebody and say, kick me in the balls? Hey, I can do that. I can do that multiple times. Someone should pay me, right? That's not how it happens, if you're wondering. Um, so we're really excited to give you this uh, this new episode format with thi- with this interview. It, it's a good time. We, we definitely enjoyed it. Mark Navarro was here. Mark Cowell was here. Uh, and the show, as always, is brought to you by the Toe and the Hold Pub and Eatery in Winnipeg, Manitoba. For those of you who are either traveling through Winnipeg and never have been or live here and don't know about it, um, the Toad offers a ton of great things, but what it really does well is atmosphere in the pub. It's great. It's like it's 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 that uh, it's that cozy living room feel that you really you feel at home there. Um, they've got a great local domestic imported craft beer selection on tap as well. And they got the whiskey bar next door, 200 different types of whiskeys to choose from. And then they got the the cavern downstairs, which is their live music venue. Uh, This week at the Cavern for Halloween night is Jive Town doing three back-to-back sets. Then on November 1st, we've got Liabilities as Arctic Monkeys and Bull Rider as Kings of Leon doing uh, some covers. And then you've got November 2nd, Mutilated Lips as Ween and Mesa Moore as the Pixies doing more covers. So you got two back-to-back cover nights at uh, the Cavern. So go check it out. Tell them we sent you. Um, We love them. You You should try to love them too. Uh, so yeah, I don't, I don't know if I got anything else for you for this episode. Um, you know, there's that, I don't, every time we clean the apartment, I have no, oh, there it is. I found it. Cue the reel. Enjoy the show. Today's a today is an absolutely fantastic podcast day. Do you know why, Martin? No, because we're drinking pink drink. Well, we're, we're drinking pink drink, but we're also we have our first guest on the show. Ooh. Our first our first interview. Yeah. On the real debaters, like um, real guest. Real yeah. <laughs> people wanted to sit down with us. <laughs> it, I, I, it, it, that's why I went after somebody who I've known for over ten years. I think it was ah. an e- it was an easy get. He said there would be pink drink. So yeah, I'm here. it was. Yeah. Drink, drink the Kool Aid. <laughs> BJ, bring that microphone just a little bit up. How was that? That's really good. All right. Yeah. Now you're now you're it boosting. falls. Maybe tighten it a bit. Yeah. If it does fall. Um. Uh. This this arm right here. Uh, yeah, today's podcast is sponsored by Pink Drink. Is it <laughs> strawberry? Is it cherry? We're not sure, but it tastes delicious, and it's in real debaters' cups. Pink flavored. It's uh, it's crystal light, I believe. Strawberry banana, if we want to get <laughs> intensely oh. accurate. You could have said whatever, and I would have believed it. I was like, yeah, it's I read, melon I read fun fact that somebody said the flavor, the artificial banana flavor is based on a banana that's now extinct a banana i don't know what the truth of it is too artificial banana is the actual flavor that they tried to replicate was the flavor of a, a strain of banana that no longer exists interesting mm-hmm. i don't wow. know if it's true but it's an interesting fact the more you know it's an interesting thing yeah <laughs> i'm not gonna call it a fact <laughs> it's true because we don't fact check that's right um so martin and mark uh welcome to the living room i know mark you just met bj but bj Vero from my originally from my high school days i think that's where me and you met correct yep. bj and you are here with us to well first of all let's give a little backstory on bj here um correct me if i'm wrong brian james Verrill, full name right jason pretty J- close, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't we haven't hung out that much <laughs> I haven't had a chance to card him recently, so I don't know the full the full <laughs> breakdown of it. Uh, we met in, I believe, grade s- grade nine. 
grade yeah, 10. Probably some, around there. Yeah, probably high grade school. 10. Yeah, high yep. school. We did a lot of theater together. Yeah. Um, and you were theater. Wait a minute. Yeah, Wait a minute. We did. Yeah. We, what plays? What plays? Uh, what did we do? Miles <clears throat> Mack. Bye bye birdie. Bye bye birdie. Yeah. You guys sang? Did you guys sing? Yeah. He was the lead. He was the Elvis. Um, I was Conrad birdie. Conrad he's not, birdie. He's not the lead, but he's just kind of like what the story kind of revolves around. There was two other characters. That there were. Yeah. There's yeah. there's there's a boy and a girl who are falling in love, and you kind of yeah. Come to and town I'm just and like the asshole guy that they're trying to get to sing this concert. That's so. exactly yeah. it. Are you like the Bradley Cooper of Bye Bye Birdie? <laughs> <laughs> I think Cooper's nicer. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and then we kind of stop hanging out as, as you do, like you, you run into each other. still. he's not one of those. He's definitely not one of those people you only see on Facebook. And then when you see them across the street, you keep walking. That's not, <laughs> 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 um, but you eventually, like, I knew you were going to get in the film. I think I did too. Yeah. yeah. When did you When did you realize that you were going to do something in film? Um, I think probably when I was well, probably when I was about four or five. Really? Because I was so like far. Uh, recording um, movies onto my our beta cassettes. I was like dubbing tapes so I could watch them later, and I was like, I can't believe that's a real job. You can just make stories. That's amazing. <laughs> that's and, awesome. Yeah. yeah right. Uh, and and so I vaguely remember hearing you kind of where, where did you start when you were getting in the film because this is the whole reason you're here today is to talk about the stunt work that you're doing currently but there's a little bit that led into it so where how did this all kind yeah of... I mean I guess around that time like out of high school yeah we were doing the theater thing and uh, I wanted to do more acting at the time even though I'm primarily a storyteller I think from you know from from when I was small but uh, yeah, I started to try to get into acting, and uh, at the time, maybe around like eighteen or nineteen, uh, I, I did a couple like YTV shows, like um, Twenty Thirty CE, and uh, uh, what was the name of that mystery show? Uh, mystery geez. show on YTV. Yeah, uh, it'll it'll come to me later. But okay. anyways, there was a couple YTV things, so I was in the right age bracket for that, and um, that was all kind of coming to a head while the industry was going on here in Winnipeg, but it's not like it is now. So. You know, there'd be these big gaps, you know, between shooting and, and filming. And I was just getting ready to go into university where I was planning to take film. Was it Mystery Hunters? No, it's Shirley Holmes Mysteries. That's what it was called. Oh, yeah. oh I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> that was filmed here, too. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I do not. And so in the university. <laughs> you never watched YTV? <laughs> no, I think I was older. Oh, okay, so, probably. Yeah, I was, I was still yeah. like... Like, when you said four beta camera, I'm like, there was no cameras when I was four. <laughs> <laughs> At least not that I could afford. Maybe some eight millimeter. <laughs> <laughs> so you got into film in university. Yeah, that's right. So um, I, I uh, took film. Like, I, I took a... Actually, I got into the creative communications program at Red River. Oh, and, you did? Uh, Fuck you. Sore spot. Sore <laughs> spot. spot for Mike. That's a, that's a, yeah. yeah. The reason we're doing this now yeah. is because I didn't get to pay 12 grand to learn it a year ago. Oh. I did try to I did try to get in, and then I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to go spend the money and get the gear. Yeah. Um, I Well, uh, there's like a two-year component with Red River, and then there's uh, like a three-year component with the university to get that degree. And I started at the university, and then I got into film. And I was just like, ah, fuck it. I'm just going to do film. So I just withdrew from the program and focused on That could have been Mike's spot. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't ready at the time. So, so you got in, then you dropped it? Yeah. <laughs> hell yeah, I did. The, one of the hardest courses in Manitoba, in, in Winnipeg, to get into. You're just like, fuck it. I don't know. I just keep prodding Mike, and we're going to get to see those falls that you're so good at. Because <laughs> <laughs> Mike tosses you out of the window. <laughs> Just like the Uncle Phil. Bye, yes. BJ. <laughs> so you, you, <laughs> that's why I wanted these two here. <laughs> I was like, we could do this one on one, or we could we could have some social commentary. Um, so you get into film and 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 you start Strata Studios, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. Okay. That's, right. that's after you graduate. Uh, yeah. Just as I was finishing up university, uh, I met a guy named Brad Crawford uh, through a mutual friend. He was just coming back from Japan for a few. Uh, he was living out there for a few years, and uh, we were just like, "Yeah, let's start a let's start a company." And then we both just kind of like called each other's bluff. And then ten years later, <laughs> we're still doing stuff. So, <laughs> so you were really yeah. into this, yeah? <laughs> so was oh, I. Shit. I'm, I'm not at, backing down. We're getting work. What are we gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> How much money you get in your bank yeah. account? <laughs> and, and and see, you, from what I know, you've made a, many multiple short films. Yeah, that's right? right. Yeah, but you then I I find out. I don't know how I found out about it, but I heard you were doing stunt work, and I was like, well, that makes sense because as long as I've known you, you've been a very like 
agile, jumpy, free flowing guy. <laughs> so I feel yeah. if anybody's going to yeah. be in stunt work, it, it definitely is you. So let's start there. And like, how how did how did going from wanting to tell stories to essentially uh, assume my ignorance here, <clears throat> wanting to get beaten up? Like, oh, where's the? Oh yeah, you know, it happened pretty organically. I was in university, and so when people ask me how did you get into stunts, I actually went to school for it. <laughs> as as Shut up. Is there as stunt school? Well, here's here's the thing. Um, uh, what University of Winnipeg does really well is in their film department. They have a lot of profs who work in the industry. And at the time that I was going there, the stunt coordinator for Manitoba for film and television, the primary stunt coordinator, Rick Skeen. Um, oh, I know Rick. Yeah, he was um, running a course called uh, Stage Combat. So it was like a mix of like combat for stage and film-related stunt work. So that course, um, and I, I knew that he did coordinating so i mean i applied myself in the course and i mean it's all fun stuff you're just learning how to fight and fall and do flips and you're and you're becoming friends with these other people in the course so it's really fun it's like a course that you just look forward to going to and once the course was done i was like well if you ever uh, need a guy to do some stunts you know <laughs> i didn't i didn't really remember expand. me when you need someone to get <laughs> <Yeah. shit> kicked. <laughs> so, I, I wasn't sure if, if i would if that call would ever come but he was like yeah uh, send me your resume it doesn't matter if it's empty send give me a headshot and you know i've seen what you can do here in the course and if an opportunity comes up we'll be in touch and then they they called and it just kind wow. of slowly progressed from there from one thing to another in so, this class when you talk like yeah. is uh, I mean, I'm I'm imagining, you know, four classes, lunch break, four classes, right? Ah. Like that's as far as my idea mm. of classroom setting goes or something along those lines. What are the classes that go into stunt work? Like, are you doing face punching between uh, 10 and 12? Well, you know are what? Are you doing, you know, rolls right. and tucks and, you know, after lunch and you've had a meal? Like, it's actually the... all in one course. So if you oh, think okay. of, if, if, if you think of your curriculum, you know, in the morning you have like film one and then you have editing. Uh, it's basically this 90 minute or two hour course twice a week okay so that's okay. how it worked it was a three credit hour so a lot course. of mats on the floor in the classroom is it yeah. like a big like oh, it's a, great. one of those acting rehearsal spaces yeah and you just put a bunch of mats on the floor it's amazing yeah you set up the mats and you just roll around oh. everything's relatively soft and forgiving and you know it's just a so fun <laughs> so another another question of that what's the final exam like is it like you coming out of a car at 60 you have to you have to tuck and roll yeah, the right way otherwise you fail or die is that how the yeah, final exactly. exam is you know it, it's kind of kind of like that a little bit maybe uh not quite so uh not quite so amped basically what it is is it's um uh you have to film a final uh, a fight so uh you you chore you coordinate or you choreograph a fight you partner up and you film it and then you're uh, rated on on the performance and and oh, the stunt thing you do. So that sounds like a fun like a fun thing to film, just a fake fight. Oh, it's great because like I said, you're with your friends, so you know you have a lot of time to figure it out, make mistakes when the camera's rolling or not rolling. It's not going to make the edit, so um, it's it's a really good way to learn. That that's I, cool. I'm, I've taken a stage fighting class actually with yeah? Rick. I think. Oh, cool. I acted a lot when I was younger. Also, yeah. I just uh, weapons or or I did. Stuff? I've done some sword fighting and I've done some fist fighting. Oh, great! S sword, sword fighting, fighting in the locker room. <laughs> for, uh, for like, uh, I played Tybalt in Romeo and Juliet. Oh, okay. So yeah, I had yeah. a sword fight. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Did you find yourself gravitating towards one skill more than the other at first, or were you like, did you yeah. see yourself being like the, the race you, car? Do you driver specialize? Or, or? Are you like yeah, like, like, <laughs> like are you the, the punchy guy or the yeah? <laughs> Where, yeah. Where's BJ? We need a guy the to take folly, a shot. The folly the guy. Yeah. The, guy on, the guy on fire. <laughs> I'm really good with getting burned. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, all those things are pretty fun. But uh, uh, I'm not a tremendous weapon guy, so okay. I commend you on that. I, I find that uh, there's just other guys that just are a little bit better than, than, than me at that stuff. But um, as far as the fight stuff goes, I'm pretty good with the fighting. Um, I'm good at selling punches. My timing's really good. Um, and I fall down good, like, <laughs> like you know, I can I can bump and do all that kind of stuff. So got an, got an yeah. A in falling. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm just imagining like the process of where you sign yeah. up for a film and 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 the director's like, all right, so what what can you do? And you're like, I fall down good. Yeah, yeah. that's it. That's the resume. That's number one on the resume. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and second to falling, I take great nut shots. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. Um, you know, I guess I guess is like. As a specialty item, like, I guess one thing that does tend to be mentioned a lot is uh, I have, like, a pretty good jump, like, a good vertical. So that every once in a while will come up if a director's oh, yeah, like, oh, we need that. to do this. And they're like, oh, yeah, BJ's the guy. He can he can do this or that. Uh, uh, like, we had to do this one gag on a, on a show called Sunnyside. It was, like, a variety yes, comedy yeah, show. Yeah. And um, 
in this one, I play like a, I was a purse thief and I'm running and the whole gag was basically like uh, this um, shopping cart was like a superhero stopping crime all over the city. And I basically had to crash into it and I, it was basically just a, an impact and then a jumping flip onto the concrete. But they were like, oh yeah, you can get some good height. So he's probably the guy to do it, which, which just means I'm just adding, adding height to the impact at the top. But, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's what they were looking for. So it worked out. So awesome. do you find that when you're when you get those kind of like opportunities or things like that, like you said, if you're really talented in one area or whatever, that you that you sort of work on that so um, that you like I'd imagine you see a lot of stunt people that are sort of martial artists or yeah, gymnast kind yeah. of people and stuff, and they kind of specialize in one area or another. Yeah, I, you know that's a good point actually. Um, okay, because fighting is a broad spectrum, right? Like you got your like sloppy haymaker brawlers in the alley, and then you have like martial artists and and all that kind of stuff. And um, I mean, I've done I've done a lot of martial arts in my past. But when it when push comes to shove, like there's guys that are like really polished. Like when we did sudden death, the guys that they were bringing in, like that that's legitimate martial arts fighting. I'm I'm now the guy just winging the the big right hand. <laughs> so because because like you know I, I'm bringing in I'm stepping in on this shot, but these guys are yeah there there is um like facets to that, and mm. um that's something that I think you want to keep working on if you want to improve. You, you can't just like let it let that blade get dull so you want to keep sharpening it up um whereas the jumping and falling stuff is just something that's a little bit more uh intrinsic for me so i'm like yeah okay cool i can i can be the drunk guy that falls off the fence or whatever the case is and um but but with the fighting absolutely like you have you'll gain so much more if you're if you're working on your craft there for sure interesting um you're you're talking about falling off of a fence and to, to me and i guess the rest of us that's not initially what I think of <laughs> when a stunt is yeah. in a movie, right? Like you, you think of the the, the, the big, car chase, the car chase, the car chase yeah, yeah. or the fight scene. and all the, yeah. Yeah, the like yeah. all, all the big action bullets. Mm. So does somebody actually get brought in? Like, where's the line? I guess yeah. I'm asking where the actor, um, where the actor stops doing the acting, and then you come in. Yeah, like, well, do they get to? Here's the thing. Um, sometimes the stunts that I do are stunts that the actor. Could probably do, but if they fall and break their wrist and the entire production goes on hiatus mm, for two weeks, okay. then all right, so that's, that's where that is. But you know, it, it really just depends. Some guys are are really keen and they want to try some stuff, and then other people are like, "Nah, have at it, jump that fence, <clears throat> I'm gonna hang out." You know, like it really just depends on on uh, how they want to approach it. Um, so so the f- line really just comes down to like how much how much the production wants to let them try stuff. And a, a follow up question: What's yeah. some of the more mundane? stunts that we don't really associate with stunts that you've maybe ah uh, you know those would probably be like speed reading yeah <laughs> sorry i just had to say it i was like well, ah. i'm just wondering is there like oh i uh once tripped on a toy car in the middle of a living room or you know like, okay yeah well the yeah, home yeah. alone remember home alone the toy cars <laughs> yeah i mean those are stunt stunts. yeah that's yeah. pretty mundane yeah. <laughs> the super banana yeah. death but uh, um yeah, a trip and falls generally would be stuff. Uh, you might come to set uh, and you might have even rehearsed something, and then they'll be like, uh, we're, "We're a little running a little late on time, and uh, you know what? We need to cover this stuff more. So get in there, let the guy push you, just like, you know, take take a small bump. You you can like knock a chair over, and and that's it. Like that's a uh, that's just an arbitrary example. But stuff can really change quickly on the day where it goes from like, yeah, and he throws you over the table, and the whole table just explodes. Uh, to like you get nudged and you like ah, and like fall and you knock a chair over and I don't mind doing either one. So <laughs> so you want to eat like a, you want to eat like a light lunch before you're gonna be filming. Yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah like what's what's the what's the three things you would put in a, like check boxes before you do a scene like what is what's your prep like mm. stretch? Yeah I'd like to get warmed up. I like to go to the bathroom and. Uh, <laughs> That's about it, really. Honestly, okay. just just kind of uh, as long as as you have enough time. As the, what I find really kind of gets me out of sorts is um, if for whatever reason, like I'm first up and uh, maybe I'm running a bit behind and processing. You know, they're like, "Hey, go to here, go to there," and you're like, you don't have a chance to just stop the wheels from spinning. Uh, it's it's just nice to take a moment to relax. Okay. And then just get into it. So that's my preference. But you just got to go with the flow. All right. However, the director's making the. Making the madness happen, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I remember you liking wrestling as a kid. Is that something that's still like? 
Um, I don't avidly follow pro wrestling. Okay. But I still talk about Shawn Michaels. Yeah, yeah I okay. like him. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> the Heartbreak Kid. The Heartbreak Kid. <laughs> yeah. And... Actually, I love throwing out a little chin music when we're when we're rehearsing. <laughs> Sweet too, so. chin music. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's in the repertoire. Where I'm going with that yeah. is is that wrestling is a choreographed physical dance, mm-hmm. right? Stunt work essentially. Can you assume the same thing? Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of there's a uh, lot of similarities, okay. except uh, wrestling tends to be a lot more impact oriented uh, with the strikes, whereas uh, with film and television. Um, a lot of the pop punches um, are taking place at distance. So you're not actually selling shots from an impact. It's all about lensing, um, uh, like focal length, um, how it compresses distance. If you shoot on a tighter lens, it actually makes things appear closer so you can stand at a safe distance. Oh. And then it comes down to timing. But there is actually a lot that you can learn from the pro wrestling. I actually took a little boot camp when I was in like my early 20s. And between that and my judo days, which teaches you to fall a lot, it's all about break falls. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Those are the, t- like, well, the judo break falling was the most vital element that uh, you can incorporate because you fall down all the time. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> so, 50% of the sport. Yeah, and yeah. It's, it's throwing. It's, yeah, it's all throwing. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. and it's really just learning how to distribute your weight and not hit the knobby, like the knobby bits. Like my elbows are just like diamond shards. So I need to, <laughs> and my knees, like. So, so one of the, the techniques, I remember uh, when, yeah. I, when I used to take Kung Fu, we had a, uh, like a class just dedicated to like when you're doing like a fall in yep. midair. Mm-hmm. So then would you distribute your weight by slapping your hands like kind yeah. of yeah, exactly onto the floor? Yep. Like uh, very, like I said, very judo break fall. You're, you're going to want to, cr- I mean, uh, to the best of your ability, you want to spot the ground you know, get a hand on and then you kind of let the, let your side and leg and arm all kind of hit at the same time to distribute the impact, turn your hand in so that the point of your elbow isn't face down. There's like so much physics. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's all physics. But that's, that's where it comes. It's very handy to stay sharp, right? Because then you'll just have that feel. It'll come a lot quicker and you're not figuring it out as much on the day. Have you ever fucked with people and made like made them think that they threw you further or like because if you if you're good at falling, I would imagine if someone like like if I accidentally bumped you backing up in in in, in, in a place and you're like wow and you right. fly all the way back, it's like I any barely like insurance them. scams. Or- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like if I had, the, I'm just I'm just thinking about you know like workers if, comp, workers comp. Yeah. <laughs> if I had this power to mess with people and yeah. no timing and know that you know you've you've accidentally elbowed me in the stomach and you just fall like, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, like you're talking about on set. I'm talking about any time in your personal life. Yeah, in my life, day-to-day like, life. Like, like the parking yeah. lot at Safeway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like you've yeah, got to exactly. Set it. Car's backing yeah. up, you just smack the back of it, <laughs> then do a barrel roll over the car behind That's you. right. Yeah. Um, not, not as much as I, I think I should be uh, messing with people, but, um, <laughs> but After you know, this podcast. yeah, when you're, when you're with friends and stuff like that, you'll, you'll mess around a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so before like, I, actually we'll, we'll start with this question, which will lead into the other one. What's, what's like the smallest, most mundane stunt you've done. And then what's the biggest one you've done? Cause I think I know Ooh. what the biggest one is, but I want you to explain uh, it. Okay. Um, I would say the most mundane. The, now this is kind of a this is kind of a cop out, but um, I, I've been called to set before where um, it's so busy on set they don't get to my scene. So I roll in, I, I just sit in my trailer, and they go, oh, "We're not going to get to your scene today. Ooh. Just go home." <laughs> so, okay, but <laughs> <laughs> ten hours in, today. yeah. Like, oh, um, Beethoven <laughs> saves Christmas. Actually, I I went in there. Um, that masterpiece. Nice. It's about minus fifty outside. We're in Transcona and. Uh, I'm sitting there with a, I don't know the, the gentleman's name, but he played Booger in um, the, uh, the oh, Revenge Booger. of the Nerds movies. Jeez, oh, he was like, his yes. name too, yeah. And, and the hologram gentleman from, from Star Trek. We're sitting in this toy show. Jordy LaForge? No, no, no. no, he's like a hologram doctor. Oh, Robert Picardo. Yeah, that's the guy. Yeah, Robert yeah. Picardo, bald so, dude, right? Yeah. Yep. So the three of us are sitting in this toy store um, <laughs> waiting for the turnaround where Beethoven just runs amok and starts trashing people. And I'm one of the people that's going to get knocked over and... Um, so they brought out like breakfast burritos and we're just hanging out eating breakfast burritos. <laughs> and um, probably about 45 minutes into it, um, they're like, it's too fucking cold. We're not shooting the turnaround. The director has the coverage he wants. You're wrapped. So I was like, all right, cool. Best best one hour day ever. <laughs> Thanks for the breakfast burrito. So, and it was like minus 50. Like no one wants to fall down in no, minus 50. No, no. We'll do it. But, you know, so uh, that was probably the, those are, those are the easiest ones where like, just things change on the day but but ultimately it is it, it would be like a trip and fall thing like um i think uh 
I think what was originally supposed to be like an elbow where, where I like fall back into like a bunch of chairs ends up just being like a thing where the character, uh, the actor basically just puts a hand on me and aggressively <laughs> moves me out of the way. So, I was, so, I was moved aside yeah. aggressively <laughs> and that's it. So consensual though, consensual. Yeah. yeah. So for, for the, the hardest one, um, there's a thing coming up in, in this movie called Sudden Death, which was really crazy. I, I can't really Sudden talk death about it. Sudden Death 2. Sudden right? Death 2, yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, I can't really talk about it just That's yet okay. because yeah. it's not out. But there was another one that I did on Joyride 3 um, where uh, basically two people, they're like two drug addicts that are, um, they, they kind of come to and they're both like kneeling on the wheel well of a semi truck and they're attached by a chain. And um, if either one of them goes for the drugs, it, it basically sets off a chain that like basically the, the axle starts to pull them off the, off the semi truck. Oh boy. And, um, so for that one, we were just ripping down the highway. <laughs> I was on there with a safety harness and, um, yeah, the, the, the meth head goes for the meth. So <laughs> things, things go bad. And, and basically what, what we had to do was they built what's called the nest in the front of the semi truck, um, where I had to basically do like a front dive barrel roll into the nest while it was going to Ooh. while they were shooting from the windshield to simulate how him. fast was this vehicle going uh, probably like 60 or 65 Jeez, like enough where like you know your you hair is just blowing and yeah. stuff and they had a what's called a russian arm it's basically like a giant crane on, a, were, yeah. on like a mercedes and yeah. they were just doing like big overhead passes and all this kind of fun stuff so that one was like fun but like yeah, it was pretty pretty intense i guess um but i enjoyed it uh, and uh everything went well so yeah. You're still here. Yeah, yeah still yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, and if you watch the movie, it's basically just a foot going over the edge. I'm like, no, oh, the whole thing got <laughs> <friggin'> <laughs> cut. So. <laughs> um, yeah. so what's your favorite then? You mm. get your biggest, your smallest, and your most memorable. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> Where were you featured the most? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. exactly. Where can I tell it's you? <laughs> um, okay, well, there's a movie called Fractured that just came out on Netflix on yep. October 11th. Yep. Um, and there's a fight between Sam Worthington and uh, another character. I, I don't want to spoilerize it uh, too sure. much, yeah, but no. they have a fight in an yeah. elevator. And uh, there's some there's some footage where, where I'm doubling the guy opposite Sam Worthington. And there's some cool stuff in that. That was really neat because they had built a, an elevator with three shifting walls so that basically the camera could be going in and out of the elevator. So they'd slide one door and he'd go in that way. And then they'd close that door and slide the other one and he'd step out of the elevator and yeah, it was just really cool. I was really proud of that one. And, uh, I don't know. There's, there's a couple, I guess it's, it's tough to say. I, I did a, I did a burn on, I still see you, which was really cool. That's the one I'm, I'm, I was yeah. waiting to um, hear about. That, and that one was really satisfying because, uh, like so much goes into it, uh, for prep. Like, um, like when, walk when us through it. Well, when you're, when you're getting ready for like a fire gag, um, you know, you have to be, there's just like layers of, of clothing and, and flame retardant material and, uh, it, all the focus is just on, on the fire gag. So, um, it was, it was pretty cool. Like, um, we did like a rehearsal where they just did a little bit of fire so we could get a feel for how it would be. And, um, so once my, my character was all layered up with, with fire and whatnot, uh, or sorry, with, um, the, the flame retardant clothing and the material, uh, I was actually, it was kind of weird because my, my character was like, um, basically going to be comped as a ghost, like falling from a, from a building. So I was actually in a, uh, harness and then suspended. So I was hanging kind of like face down, like just lit on fire. Um, and, uh, it's, yeah, it was good. Me and, uh, another, st uh, stunt performer here in town, her name's Kristen Sawatsky. We both did the burns and, uh, for that day. And, uh, it was great. Cause like, you know, you just have to be really, really focused and, um, safety is obviously paramount and yeah, it was, it was really good. It felt very rewarding. Like I left, I left work that day being like, man, that's, that's like one of the coolest things I've been able to do. <laughs> Dang. You know, I uh, imagine you must kind of feel like sort of a star that like you're the focus of a lot of stuff right because yeah. it, it's not like okay well here's the big scene you just come in for a little bit right and then, yeah. you know yeah i i guess so yeah it's kind of weird um because you're right like honestly the uh the stunt is is generally you're doubling a character and and you know doing that kind of thing and you're stepping stepping in kind of in the periphery in a sense so yeah that was kind of cool I, and i didn't really think about it like that but uh no you're right i mean everything's just kind of focused on that that one moment which That's is pretty, be pretty cool I, I, I'm happy when I can clear my desk before I walk out of the office. So, so you being like, I got burnt today. I feel like I really nailed it. I mean, but, but that's, you know, it's relative to the scenario, right? Like, I mean, that's a, that's a big, like, what, what did it feel like being on fire like uh, that? Man? You know, like, it's so weird because, um, 
by the time you're in all of the the clothing and and you're covered you're slathered in this goo it's you're so cold the issue with a burn is you're actually if they don't do it fast from the time you start your prep like your body temperature is just bottoming out so you're actually if you stay in it too long like you could get hypothermia which is an interesting problem to have when you're about to be lit on fire. Mm-hmm. It's, um, yeah, it's complete opposite. So basically, once you begin your process, everything comes down to just like, okay, setting up, 10 minutes, like they're making the calls and they're getting ready. And um, I was so, so cold. I was like, light me up. <laughs> <laughs> and, light uh, it. and we did a, a good burn. It was 40 seconds. And uh, oh, wow. about the 30 wow. second mark, I could feel it start to like permeate uh, the layers and I was like, all right. Yeah. It's, it's starting to feel like a, a warm shower. Okay. Now it's a hot tub. And then, <laughs> uh, um, luckily I didn't get like what's called hot spots, which is like where if you have like a little metal buckle or something, that thing can get really hot. Yeah. And then once they like put you out, it could still be hot. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't have any of that. So I got off pretty easy for the most, for the most part. I would you say. mean like sitting on a, on a buckle of, <laughs> yeah. Sitting on a, a, a seatbelt buckle it's, on a hot day. Totally, yeah. It's, hot it's le- hot like leather that. seat, hot leather yeah. seat. But they, they have protocols for that. They have someone right exclusively there. waiting with just just like um, a hose of water to cool that down. They have someone there to patch you out. They have someone there that's How like, do I get that job? Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I want to be the hose boy. Just, just, going for a, just going for a dig <laughs> under there. <laughs> it's a big water gun. That's yeah. all you're playing with all day. So will they just put out the one spot? That's... No, well, I mean... Basically, after the after the burn's done, they'll come in and they'll slather you down. They'll put you out, and then they're gonna come in and they're gonna expect to see uh, inspect to see if anything's still lit. Is there a doctor like that? That it's paramedics are on standby. Okay. All, all all the stuff. Yeah, that's super cool. How yeah. long does the suit last? Like you said, like it it gets hot after like thirty seconds. Like how long can you technically be in the suit before you burn? <sighs> I don't know. It's a good question. Um, because because of the what I was wearing, um, I feel like we could have gotten away with a little more. Um. Not that you'd want to. Like, mm-hmm. you want to keep it within, like, safe parameters. Uh, but, um, yeah, uh, just the, the the gel that they used was really good. Uh, it was kind of like a very surface burn. Uh, it, was, it was really cool. I think it really, it, that's very dependent on a ton of variables. Mm-hmm. What you're wearing, what they're using to burn you with, all that kind of stuff. Oh. Yeah. I, you Pretty know, just hanging and burning, running and burning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess if you're, if you're running, you I mean, the, the air would feed it, right? The air would feed the fire if you're running. Like, it, would that, like, affect it at all? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it would. Um, but uh, it's it's good, actually, to have a bit of movement because it kind of wicks the heat off a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is, there is that why when people are on fire, you know, you see the movies where they're just, sorry, I'm, like, waving my hands and going, like, in, like, swimming motions? Yeah, you kind ever of. see that? Yeah, yep. yeah. Well, I, I've been on fire from when I by accident not <laughs> not on not, purpose not not by any means <laughs> like i think i was still in high school when i did that right and i i uh, think i remember this yeah burnt your elbow right burnt my elbow yeah, yeah burnt my yeah. elbow burnt my hand burnt my pants burnt burnt, yeah. burnt my pride <laughs> burnt a lot and then <laughs> so and i and i remember being <clears throat> on fire for a very brief period of time but um in intense pain so being so close you know to what? that that's, is like that's that's ballsy man. and that's the like, thing like that's why that's why they take so many steps because like yeah it's like fuck i i burnt my my forearm on a lawnmower and i was like this is the worst two weeks ever you know like <laughs> so like you know that's that's why so many steps are taken you want to make sure everything is running real smooth is it, to kind of switch gears here is, yeah is there a big stunt performer group in hollywood is it small and pulled from like a very vast you know uh like are you talking like uh like basically in the film world yes uh you know it's it's more so comprised of teams like um for example uh the people that do the fast fast and the furious films hobbs and shaw like that's eighty seven eleven. and there's other people that do other films and they all kind of have their own specialties so, so you're telling me that there are companies of teams of stunt yeah. performers who will yeah. then get hired for a movie Let's say they need six stunt performers yeah, and they'll... like if they're like, we're doing the raid three, we need these guys because they do a lot of like cool close quarters combat stuff. And they also know how to use guns like and their choreo is cool. Like they might go with those guys. So, oh, yeah. It's, OK. Yeah. Makes um, sense. Is there like a is there a, you know, a n- n- top of the food chain? Is there somebody out there that, you know, that's just killing it? Well, I mean, Super uh, Dave Osborne. <laughs> Sorry, I had yeah, to bring that good. up. He's good. Uh, <laughs> I had to bring that up. <laughs> um, well, eighty-seven eleven, they're pretty good. Like okay. they've been doing a lot of cool stuff. Um, like big gags, right? Like Hobbs and Shaw, crazy stuff and crazy Michael Bay vehicle movies? stuff. Yeah, like well, I know, I know they did the Hobbs and Shaw, and they did some of the fast 
fast films and stuff like that. And that's kind of been their specialty lately. But, uh, I mean, that stuff's all quite Hobbs incredible. and Shaw was pretty insane. Hobbs and Shaw was yeah. nuts. Especially that random clothing change scene that was not needed. <laughs> Rock was in, his in the little, middle of the like, fight at his, the end on his, his grass skirt, and then <laughs> they were like, "Okay, off to the next problem." And then he just did a wardrobe change in the in the middle of the scene. And I looked over at Mark, and I'm like, "They they didn't need that." Like, I mean, it's <laughs> funny, but they didn't need that. When you say Hobbs and Shaw or Fast and Furious or, or James Bond, for example, mm, yeah, yeah, um, can you tell a stunt is going down? Can you do you have the eye for it? I guess having done it for so long, like, can you can you tell where? Okay, because Daniel Craig does his own pretty much, right? That's, that's right. That's what's on the, out there. But okay, can you see where a stunt performer is filling in? Um, can, is it? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been looking for that since like before I even did stunts okay. and stuff like that. Okay. But um, yeah, uh, like a telltale camera angle or something that's used frequently. You know what? Or... Honestly, if it's the back of the guy's head. <laughs> Must that's like a good that's, that's a good indicator. Him, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like okay, so yeah. the face of the actor's not in the scene, chances are, right? Okay. Yeah, I mean and, and I mean Tom Cruise does his own stuff and yeah, sometimes at the back of his head, but but everybody knows he he does. Well he 90% broke his uh, what he broke break his yeah. leg in, or ankle in the, the Mission Impossible. Femur bone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. So have uh, on on to onto the hurts and pains here. Yeah. What have you hurt? Uh, you know, I've been pretty lucky so yeah. far. Um Oh man, Beethoven! I'm coming back to this one again. Like man, okay. Well, Roll over, uh, I was like in the marching band, and uh, the bad guy is like out of control on on like a dirt bike, and they gave me this trombone, and so everyone has to kind of like dive out of the way, and um, it was like I dove out of the way and just perfectly landed, kind of like on my hip socket, Ooh. and like oh. that was like the first fall, and then they're like, "Okay, going again, going again," and I was like, "Oh, I know I'm gonna land on my hip socket because it feels like it's <laughs> grown four times its normal size," oh. and so like I just kept bumping on that spot, and uh, I had like a dinner plate sized bruise on oh like my on my hip and butt basically, um, but since then, I mean that's like 2011, so I've I that was like when I was like, oh, man, these yeah, I gotta need to get some new stunt pads because this isn't <laughs> quite doing the job. Just this skin and meat stunt so, pads, you say? So, yeah. like, are you are you normally? Oh yeah, I, I try yeah. to I try to armor up as much as I can. If okay. I can get, if, like I said, I'm I'm really knobby in the knees and elbows. So if and guys have it a lot easier. Like if you if you have pants and a shirt on, like I, I have pretty low profile stuff that it will take the edge off really nicely. But it's great because then you can you can really dig into a couple falls and you know you have that little bit of insurance there. So. It's the girls that always get the short end of the stick. They're always wearing like shorts and tank tops and they're like, do the same stuff, but they just have to do it. No pads. <laughs> um, what's the industry like for male versus female? That's a, I was, I was thinking about that today, actually. Like it, being, you know, Hollywood and being yeah. a male dominated industry. Yeah. I, I mean, there are female, female male actors, right? So you've, yep. I, I feel that that might be a um, part of Hollywood that maybe it's like, well, you, you, you do men play women in stunt scenes? Do women play men in stunt scenes? That's or? pretty uncommon. Yeah. I can't think of any off the top of my head. I, I think I had heard like some rumblings of a lady doing a, a stunt for a guy, but you know, it is what it is. Um, but uh, as far as like how, how it skews, I mean, unless it's like a very specific film where it's like oh, a bunch of guys fighting in a tournament or something like that, I find it's pretty you know, pretty, pretty even, I guess, you know, um, maybe it's like 60, 40 where guys will do maybe a bit more stuff than, than the ladies, but, okay. um, there's, but then there's like, you know, a movie like Chucky will come to town and it's all, all women which one? running one of which Chucky 27, uh, Chucky 42. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, we've done two here in Winnipeg and each time I'm like, Oh, here we go. Chucky. Someone's getting messed up and it's always ladies. So I don't, the phone is just dead. I just get nothing. Here, so. Yeah. Uh, I got here. Let's, uh, let's break it down the list. Um, what are you, some of your favorite stunt scenes that you've seen mm. that have, you're just like, Mwah, that's fucking amazing. <laughs> you know, I, I have some weird ones, I guess, but um, okay. I find a, okay, there's a movie called Class of 1999. And, oh, uh, here we go. Deep dive. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd say check it out. It's, it's weird, but okay. it's, it's fun. But there's, there's a scene where the main character, it, like it, basically the premise of this movie is like, like, uh, you know, the U.S. is out of control and they're bringing in, like, cyborgs to be teachers in, like, the inner city schools. As you do. Yeah. And um, one of the cy- – they don't know that they're cyborgs, but but one of them is uh, the gym teacher and the main they character. They never know they're cyborgs. <laughs> We've seen this yeah. movie. Yeah. And – The cyborgs don't know they're cyborgs? No, the cyborgs <laughs> know they're cyborgs. Because that's deep. But all the bad <laughs> – <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the whole third act where they're like, holy shit. That's a Terminator holy Salvation shit right there. <laughs> I always like that one where they don't know that they're a robot. 
Yeah, and <laughs> I'm the robot. I thought you were the robot. <laughs> yeah, they were teaming up against what they thought was the robot until they found out they were also one, and they're like, "Oh shit, I'm on the wrong team." Um, but uh, yeah, there's a scene where he's he's uh, you know talking back to this teacher, and the teacher like picks him up over his head and and just spikes him like a lawn dart. It's on a wrestling mat. It was like straight up like a seven foot Jeez. just throw. And, and I think it was the actor, like actually the actor. Ooh. And he bounces off his ass and his hands like off the mat. And I'm just like, how the hell did they do that? Like that, they were just like, okay, guy, we're going to just fucking throw you on your ass as hard as we can now. How do you sell that to somebody? Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess he was just down. But like I've, I've that one just always stuck with me. I saw that movie well before I was doing stunts. And I was always just like, oh, my God. Who does that? <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I think just for that, you should check it out. There's, there's, a, and it's, it's awesome too. But um, you know, you know which one actually has like a ton of great stunts, and it's a classic is Terminator Two. Um, okay. I love the stunt. I wouldn't, I wouldn't really want to do this one, but like, I love the stunt when the T1000 gets in that like semi truck when he's chasing Ooh, after John Connor, yeah, yeah. and he's like, get out. And they, it's just a shot of road as they're driving and a guy just goes, he just falls out like a tumbleweed and he's like, yep. and you're yes. like, yep, yep, yep. Like you got maybe two of those in you. And then you're like, <laughs> I'm I, can we try this? I'm guessing, hurts. I'm guessing you don't learn to do that other than just doing it. Sometimes you just got to <laughs> eat shit. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you don't really, there's no, like I easing that into fall. that, you know? Yeah. yeah. That fall you, looked like it hurt. I'm like that. Like yeah. There's just balance. no way around that one. Like it's no. a, it's a vehicle at a speed and you're just like, okay, I'm going to jump out and roll. <laughs> Like that's no that's no fun, <laughs> but that one also does very good. Um, face they, they do the gag twice in it, I think, where Arnold or somebody grabs a person and he throws them into a wall, and they just like basically take a face to the wall. Um, There's the not, opening scene in the in the grill when he throws the guy over the oh, restaurant. Oh yeah, yeah, that one's really on good too. The guy goes through down. the window yeah, and yeah. and he's burning his hands. That yeah. like there's just that's just it's just a, a highlight sequence. But that window work, so. and this and Terminator Two is pre most CGI, I would yeah, say. Yeah, like, I think that's all, no, that's all practical That's all stuff. practical. Yep. So to get a guy... I think that would be super fun, actually, though. Through be, the yeah. pass, behind a, like, in a kitchen, like, how how many how many fucked up takes before well, he went? Because, you know, like, when you when you watch, like, the dude perfect guys try to nail, like, I, the, the, the trick shots, I'm, I'm applying that thinking to a stunt yeah. where until you get the shot, you're eating shit, essentially, well, right? Well, I would like to think that in a gag like that where they're like, okay, we have to like clear a certain height. We're going to put a, we're going to put a window in. You got to like basically fly over the gap and land on the, on the stove. Um, that's where rehearsal comes in. You'd probably set okay. up a mat, a trampoline, like you're landing on a mat and you're, you're figuring out the, the mathematics of it. Like how hard do I need to jump? How much do I need to angle it? So I don't hit the roof when I'm breaking through the window, all those kind of things. But I actually think that one would be super fun. Like if they're like, <laughs> PJ. fly through the air, yeah. go through a window and burn your hands. I'd be like, yeah, let's See do that it. square? We need you to yeah. go through it yeah, horizontally. Exactly. Yeah, just totally. yeah, exactly. Just bust or keep in the window and then burn your hands in, in the diner's the kitchen. Like that sounds great. So because you're in the biz, do you find yourself like wanting to see movies that have lots of action sequences? You know, so you can, is, or yeah. you, you're like, I've had enough of that at work. You know, it's funny. I went through like a phase where I was like, ah, uh, um, I was not really watching a lot of action stuff, but I've kind of like rekindled my love for it a bit. And um, now I'm like, oh, let's see this. See, like, I mean, like, you know, I mean, geez, when you, I mean, when you're watching a movie like John Wick, it's like, you know what you're getting and you're like, hey, mm. just how amazing are they going to make this? And, yeah. you know, it's so polished and so slick. It's, it's great. Yeah. But then, you know, or, or I think I said the raid earlier. Yes. You but did. like that one's just so raw and gritty like that. Like, yeah, I was going to so say, fun. like, I earliest stunts for me were all like Jackie Chan movies like The Legend of the Drunken Master like when he's on yeah, fire yeah, and he's yeah. fighting while he's on fire I'm like that is crazy like doing complex martial arts while you're on fire yeah yeah that's just wild and stuff. he does it all himself right like Jackie Chan yeah. does all his own stunts yeah. and knowing insane. knowing what you know with like you've how long have you been doing it what do you think About ten, 10 years 10 yeah. years okay have you seen the industry change standards and practices? Because um, you're talking about Jackie Chan. Yeah. And I'm going, what, I don't think there was master. standards and practices in China. I mean, yeah. that's hard. You know, it's funny. Um, I don't know how much things have changed, especially in like a 10 year gap like that I've been involved in. But people to this day on any, like on any given film, they'll be like, oh, it's not really like that gag. It's not Jackie Chan. He's not running around ladders. It's more so-and-so. And so he's still, even, even referencing Jackie Chan or Bruce Lee, like, everyone makes comparisons to what the tone of the scene is. And he totally still has a place in, in comparables. Really? Yep. People, wow. 
literally just like a few days ago we were talking about that on set like we're like yeah it's like it's less kind of hijinky it's less uh less jackie chan and it's just a little bit more hard-hitting like jet lee like you know like literally broke it down so to that. these are comparisons these that absolutes. are constantly yep. held yep. as standards yep. that's yep. um how about safety <laughs> like I, I i don't want you to to out anything you know, but at the same time hmm. like what is Actually, that's something I'm I'm pretty happy to talk about. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. Because uh, like I don't know how the practice. I mean, you know, there's there's been a few accidents that people have, you know, that have come up on the news yeah, recently yeah. and stuff like that. But um, as far as my experiences go, um, I like working with the skeins and and their safety protocols and stuff. I I've never been in a situation where I'm like I don't know. Like everything feels very safe. Uh, the communication is very good, and. Um, I think that's very important because like you're making movies and you want to make sure that everyone's happy and healthy at the end of the day. And, um, that's one thing I'm super happy with is like, I can go to these guys, I can talk to them about concerns and it might be something minor. Like I might be like, uh, Hey, um, I noticed that there's like just this little kind of wire type thing sticking out. Do you think we could just snip that off so I don't catch my arm on that? And then please, I mean, I mean, that's a given, right? That's, yeah, that's just yeah. whatever, but like, that's, decency, but that's just things like we're all looking out for stuff where it's like, Oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't really think about this or I didn't think about that. Um, uh, but ultimately, you know, like it's, it's been very good. That's one thing that I'm, I'm so happy to be, uh, involved with here in, in w- the Winnipeg film industry is, uh, safety has been amazing. So, so on uh, the, on the topic of safety, is there sort of a, um, if you're all involved in a, in a stunt, right. Do you all have the ability to, to stop uh, at any given time? Yeah. I think if like you can stop call work like, authority, stop work authority, yeah. like the safe word. Yeah. yeah. I I don't think you would. Beethoven. Stop this. <laughs> <now>. Beethoven. <laughs> this dog is out of control. <laughs> I cannot work with him anymore. <laughs> can we get another St. Bernard, please? Yeah. Can we get Absolutely. Like if, if you're like, I don't know. Like, let's say I have to step onto the street and I got to do a thing and there's a car coming. If, if for whatever reason I feel like something is wrong or off, yeah, I can, I can blow the take and not worry about getting in trouble about stopping that because, you know, I mean, worst case scenario, you just reset and you go again. Um, and, and there's not an expectation that you have to like man up or whatever and, and do a thing. Yeah, like that's that. kind of what so, I was asking. Yeah. 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 No, which I imagine at some point in history there there was. Uh, you know, like I'm sure I'm sure there's situations where where something like that could could have happened, but um, that's that's never been something that I've had to be concerned with. Like I'm like I said, I'm very lucky in that capacity here. Like blowing the sun, I'm just thinking because I just watched Tropic Thunder again recently. I'm just thinking <laughs> of that scene at the beginning where everything's ready to go and he has to cry, but he can't cry. But then the jets are coming in, so they do the explosion and waste like what two million dollars? Like is it? <laughs> You ever feel that pressure on a stunt, like where you're just like, "Well, this is gonna cost the studio this much money if I don't get this done," and then get punched in the face by a Tom Cruise lookalike, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like Michael B. Jordan getting knocked out because he mistimed the punch, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, in, in rehearsal, happen? yeah, that actually wow. happened. Yeah, oh, geez. was that in Creed? That's in Creed. Yeah. Oh, uh, mm. whoa, my microphone stopped. Wow, that sounds uh, pretty close, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess um, you know, that's <clears throat> those are like the exceptions. Like if there's a thing where it's like we're gonna demolish a whole building. I mean, again, it really just comes down to like uh, safety and stuff. Like, if you, uh, you know, if you, if you're the foreground character and you need to like take a punch and go down, like, I don't know, like, it, it really has to be. Again, I'm I'm just arbitrarily making sure. stuff yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, like, let's yeah. say a building's gonna get ex- blown up. Like, I don't know. Like, you, you wanna you don't wanna compromise the scene, but but your safety is paramount. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. I've been involved in some things like that where it's they kind of stress to everybody because everybody's kind of got a different view and an angle on a situation that even though you're not the, the main person or blah, 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 you, you still have a, if you see something, say something, make sure like, well, yeah, I kind of saw that thing hanging, but it wasn't my place to, mm. to mention it to the dude who's going to go do the thing. Like, you know, I, yeah. I, I was hoping you would say, Oh yeah, everybody's kind of, yeah. you know, good to go. Yeah. They don't be like, Oh, we got another one. We got another BJ kicking, <laughs> yeah, exactly. kicking around in the just back. A, just a bag of meat <laughs> that we can. Yeah. So that, that's actually one thing that's, <laughs> that's been really good. Human so. rights violation <laughs> there, I think. <laughs> one more BJ, please. We've got the cloning machine from uh, what the, the magic movie with Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale. Ah, uh, yes. You yeah. know, they just keep making yeah. more BJs in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of that Mike, Michael Keaton movie where. Yes, yeah, duplicity. Duplicity. <laughs> but then he starts yeah. making a copy of the copy. And multiplicity. <laughs> yeah. Multiplicity, yeah, multiplicity. Duplicity, <laughs> Clive Owen. Multiplicity, <laughs> Michael Keaton. <laughs> I just remember the one line I like pizza. <laughs> I need you to tell me what you need from me, honey. Annie McDowell's just giving him shit. It's so great. 
You look like you're gonna say something. Oh, it was dumb, but uh, yeah, that that Michael Keaton was the one that went on to be Batman, actually. So, that, yeah. yeah, the the fourth gen. <laughs> <laughs> the fourth, yeah. yeah, the copy of a copy. <laughs> <laughs> No, I they get always it. get like, a little bit worse yeah. when yeah. you copy your copy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you lose a little bit of quality. Not, yeah. <laughs> Fidelity is not infinite. Yeah. Um, what do you think of, like, I, just just off the top of your head, but, like, actors doing their own stunts versus not? Is there, is there like, is there, why is Daniel Craig continuously doing them? Even though he's saying in every interview that his body is just beating the shit, he could take a knee, essentially. Yeah. Nobody would... I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, uh, there's a there's a obviously merit to having your star's face in the shot while he's throwing a punch, right? Um, but uh, what is the merit behind that? Uh, well, you know, it's just production value. If yeah. if they're if they have a good, you know, if they're they're they have a well coordinated scene and and he's got it all dialed in, then how awesome would that does it look when James Bond is like? Doing James running Bond. a full yeah. 40 second sequence where it's like him just standing up and shooting guys and see him jumping over and, a building and stuff and just see that yeah. face that yeah. face shot of him just boom. yeah exactly you know because then it's just like well i think it just comes down to production value and i think part of it is they like to do that stuff you know so you guys aren't angry that he's taking your job away you know <laughs> i was gonna say equal pay he's in equal a, right he's in a position <laughs> where like he's james bond so if he wants to put his foot down and be like i'm jumping this crevice and breaking my foot then but he's <laughs> you done know? he's done such a fucked up thing for the next james bond he set the bar so high that if say idris elba or tom hindleston or any oh, of the the yeah. top five picks get in there they're gonna be like so uh we got Daniel Craig to do his own stuff. Yeah, right. You know, I don't think there's any shame in, in like, if let's say the next guy comes in and he's like, I'm good. I think that's fine because they're going to find somebody that's going to make him look amazing. Yeah, I'll tell him to call you. Know? you. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, I got exactly. a line to Sony. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, CGI. Um, With stunt work. You know, I'm cool, like, because lately I find that CGI in terms of stunt related stuff is like enhancement. Like when I did the burn, um, I think they just added a little more fire to my head, which is great, you know, like, um, so that, that stuff's really cool. Um, or, you know, they can add a little bit more fire and explosions on like a car scene, let's say like, but I don't think they're quite in a place yet where they're, you know, it's going to be one or the other, you know, they're not, they're not using, um, like 3d. I mean, they are sometimes using like 3d modeled rigs and, and stuff of, of characters, but it's not quite there yet. I, I don't think. So they'll do you a know. practical stunt and then yeah, zhuzh, zhuzh it up a little bit. Yeah, Thank exactly. you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We brought that up. Exactly. Back. I saw a rig that Tom Holland was in for, um, I think it was Far From Home, that they were showing some of the launch sequences that not mm. all of, like he would be strapped in. It, it, it looked like a circus rig, essentially. And yeah. it was pulled tight and it had a set of trampolines in it and it allowed him to go from one launch, flip, drop again, do another one and flip and like oh, film all the flip sequences. That's so awesome. <laughs> that sounds and, so cool. Well, and I looked at that when I was like, I, so I, was that a motion capture? Is that what they were doing? With I that? think it was a motion yeah. capture. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I just looked at that. Rig. It, I'm guessing that kind of stuff doesn't come to, to Winnipeg, right? Like that's, that's the studio not sets. That, yeah. That's not the, that I've seen. I mean, that's like, yeah, like those are, those would be reserved for like, I mean, in, in, in my opinion, like that's, that's Avengers level stuff. That's yeah. would be like Lord of the Rings or Star Trek or, or Star Wars, you know, where they're reskinning characters over top of other people doing the practical element and then, you know, applying the CG or the, uh, the V effect element. Okay. When a, like how much editing goes, like when you tell me that your timing is great and you know how to take a punch, is it really just that? Is there nothing else in editing that adds, to, like, oh, like a John Wick yeah. fight? It, it, you know I'm, what? I'm, like, sound is so so important. The like, Foley artist. Next time you watch a fight, just listen. Just you can just close your eyes and you just hear the bones crackle, and you know it's you know it's good. What makes bones so. crackle? What's what's this? What's the thing they do? To <laughs> I make bones like crackle? celery. So okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but sound engineering is very important to enhance a scene because it just makes it that much more visceral right to the ex the the, the uh, viewing experience and uh you know there's other subtle things too like you might be able to shoot something in you know in a locked off capacity but just adding a little bit of like camera shake on an impact you're like you know you just you feel it a little more so there's lots of really cool little things you can do to just make it read that much stronger as opposed to literally like okay you throw punch i take punch yeah exactly it's a know. lot of things coming together to make it really really sing 
how does a John Wick fight scene play out? Like in your mind, like from what you know, right? Uh, you know, and and just the 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 fluidity that yeah. comes with a, just with crazy Keanu Reeves crazy fight. choreo. I mean, again, that's like that's him doing it, and mm-hmm. man, it's right? amazing. It's so amazing. Like, uh, but that just comes down to just rehearsal and choreography because like some of those sequences are so long that it's just i mean the whole movie you know you're you're signing up for like basically just an extended action sequence you know yeah it's oh. one one to the next on the next one you know yeah. jumping from action to yeah action absolutely scenes, basically it's yep. it's insane i love those movies it's i and and like it launched off of like so a hope right just just to follow up on that your the, the john wick question um you said rehearsal 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 like how long would it take? Like just let's say for a yeah. five minute scene from rehearsal to actually filming to get it down to get that fight scene done for five minutes. Well, that's a good question. Um, I don't know what the answer would be for something like that, but I've spoken to another coordinator who was from out of town that worked on a big project, and um, they rehearsed for a scene, and I think they filmed for a whole week to figure out wow. the choreo and the gags, and from what they said, it just kept going through revision processes and they did i think it was like between 10 and 12 do-overs of that sequence where so it was oh, almost wow. it was like it was somewhere in the ballpark of like 10 to 14 weeks of choreo just and the rehearsal scene. and swapping gags and and doing all that crazy stuff so it could take a long time yeah because yeah. when they start including like like the jackie chan stuff where like you're kicking things and like you're throwing the, furniture you're, you're throwing furniture that mm. that like has to break a certain way like i can't imagine how many couches they're going through and choreographing yeah you know or are they just like getting to the point where they're like okay now couch breaks over top of body move to next right like is, is it very like you say rudimentary or yeah is well it... i mean one thing that that we are afforded the luxury of when you're filming something, even something really ambitious and crazy, like a John wick film is like, not everything takes place in a one or so, you know, you get your wides and then you can start closing in uh, for coverage on select items. So let's say the couch thing that you're talking about, like, you know, you'd probably establish that in the wide, but you're going to shoot it in a close up so that you can see how amazing it looks in a closer shot. And then they go, okay, we're going to do the couch sequence, bring out the three couches and we're going to do it, you know? And then, you know, they'll, they'll pick up their angles probably with like two to three cameras or more depending on the nature of what they're doing and they'll just cover the shit out of it and then move on to the next big beat in the sequence. Okay, so it's compartmentalized as it opposed is. to... Yeah. Because 14 to 20 weeks of rehearsal sounds like what Taylor Swift does before she goes on tour. Yeah, like it's it, crazy. You're, you're talking dancing. You're talking... Yeah, it is. Like yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's a beautiful... It's a beautiful violent dance. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything... Like, so you're doing stunt work now but you mentioned that you were super interested in acting and, and storytelling and directing have yeah. you done anything sort of sort of else or do you have aspirations yeah well or? i'm primarily a writer director producer and I, I i'm a stunt guy so um i mean what i do is i i incorporate elements of what i know as a stunt person and uh, i actually did a film um called patterns that's uh it's debuting at um, the Toronto After Dark Film Festival, one of the biggest genre festivals in Canada. Oh, awesome. And it's closing night, plays in front of Elijah Wood's film, Come to Daddy. Um, and that one's kind of like a fun 80s Cronenberg, Manchurian Candidate kind of weird thing. Sweet. And there's like a scene where um, a guy's been, an older gentleman's been programmed to basically go shoot up a restaurant, and, and but he starts glitching out. So they send this guy on a motorcycle to go clean up the mess. And that scene's... You know, I, I had all my like stunt friends there and he goes in with a bat and he's taking out the glitching guy and killing off all the dudes that, you know, might want to talk about it later. So <laughs> cleaning up mess and yeah. So, you know, I love, I love having that, that background so that I can, as a director, I can bring those elements to the forefront and I, you know, I have an understanding of how to keep things safe. It's I know, I know what we're toolbox. capable of working within what, what budget I have and, th- and those kind of things. Absolutely. It's huge. So. That's um, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and when, when does that air? When does uh, the festival? That screens on the 25th of October, um, 7.30 p.m. Yeah, and this is going to air a little later than that. So when we put it up, we'll put up the link yeah. to that and all that stuff. Cool. Yeah. Um, Are you going out there? I think I might be working that day, so I uh-huh. don't know if I can go. <laughs> I really want to, though. I went last year with uh, – I had a pair of films in that festival, and it was a great time. I really enjoyed it. So I'm, I'm actually pretty choked. Like, every day I'm just like, oh, it's getting closer, and – no movement, probably not going. So, <laughs> you have um, you have some accolades though, from what I. Does it have to do with stunt work, or is it um, have to do with film work? I did actually win. I think in 2016, Sean Skeen and I we won a, an actor award for outstanding stunt performance on Pinkertons, which is a uh, uh, like a western show that yep. was shot here, 
and that was uh that was really fun we just did like a bar brawl and uh, it was great that was actually okay remember when you asked me about stuff that i've done that I've, i'm proud of yes that's yes. that's one that i'm very okay. proud of uh it was i remember leaving set that day and being like man that was awesome like we really did some cool stuff um, it all comes together yeah and, and sean's a good friend of mine so okay. like knowing that I'm going into it fighting him. Like, we're just like, okay, hey, do this. Slam me here. Well, it was just like, this is totally, it was so good. This is, <laughs> it's not wrestling, but it's wrestling. It's talking to each other. It's having a rapport. It's knowing, absolutely. It's knowing your pacing. Yep. It's knowing your, yep. your scene and knowing how to feed off of each yeah. other, but way cooler. I That's don't a mean great to... genre for, for fighting. Oh it's yeah. The Western. Totally. Oh yeah. yeah. Did someone fall off a railing? You know what I mean? That second floor <laughs> ramp, boom, just falls off. And there was a, actually, I, I would say like the thing that I, I enjoyed the most in that fight was there's a bottle laid on its side and he and he picks me up and, and basically choke slams me onto the bar Ooh. and the bottle just explodes. <laughs> yeah. it's, that's very fun. So I enjoyed that. Um, there's another film that actually, sorry if I can if yeah. I can mention this yeah, one too. Yeah, totally. I, I did a, another film called uh, Incident in a Ghostland, okay. uh, directed by Xavier Jens. He did Martyrs, which was like a neo French horror masterpiece of its time. That's the one where the girls get. Uh, uh, it was like a very controversial film because, uh, like, basically, it, it had scenes where these girls are like skinned except their faces. Is, is that ring a bell? Th- it brings a bell because I was recently looking at films that had a hard time getting past the rating agency. Yeah, that's probably it's one on of it. them. It's on it. And uh, so this was his film, and um, I was doubling like one of the main uh, antagonists in the film. And in that scene, again, Kristen Swatsky, who I mentioned earlier, who, who I did the burn with on "I Still See You," we had like a huge fight in a kitchen, and that thing is. I've seen it and it's crazy. Like it is like just people getting slashed with beer bottles and like having their face just like slammed through multiple dinner plates. And does it ever get out of hand? It is wild. Uh, You know, like, do you guys ever find yourself like, like the, the recent story of Tom Hardy and uh, uh, Shia LaBeouf where Shia LaBeouf knocked out Tom Hardy. And then it was later found out that they had been roughhousing and Mm. he, nakedly jumped on him and then oh, he went flying down the stairs and knocked out Tom Hardy. <laughs> when you and Sean or anybody else yeah. are working together, do you guys ever like, you know, you know get naked getting, and jump yeah. on each other? Yes, oh, that's, yeah. uh, but, um, <laughs> you know, situations like, it's interesting that you mentioned that because one of the, the aspects of doing stunt work is like, you have to be pretty dialed into what, what you need to be getting done. Because again, like I was saying, there's, there's the, the broad strokes of the scene but then there's also a lot of the coverage that you need to shoot. So if you get too wild and out of control and you end up falling out of frame, you got to do it again. And then, you know, you're burning time. So a lot of it has to be like, uh, you know, very dialed in. It's going to read with a lot of intensity, but the intensity needs to go to the right place. If you need to fall okay. and hit the fridge, you want to hit the fridge because if you, f- cause if things are escalating and you fall against the, the, din- the dining room table, then they just didn't see it. Right. So, yeah. so yeah, it's, it's weird. It, it's like, it has to be like constrained chaos. It's at targeted. Times. Yeah. It's tar- very targeted. Um, so, you know, you can feel it. Like they'll be like cut and you'll be like, Holy shit. Like I'm like, that was a good take. Like that felt really good. But, but the goal is you really want to keep it where they, they need it to be. Okay. I've heard that somewhere that it, it, sometimes when things seem the most out of control and crazy is the times that things have to be the most precise and, yeah. and planned. I, Interestingly, I would say that that's accurate because one, you'll take the little things for granted where it's the push and the shove, but it's the thing where it's like you have to fr- send your friend's face through a bunch of breakaway plates where you want to make sure you're on point, even though it's like reading chaotically and, you know, um, you're getting ready to launch someone into like a bunch of breakables. It's like, focused uh, chaos. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, you really, you get in the zone and it's, that's yeah, pretty awesome. It's, it's fun. What's the adrenaline high after? You know... <laughs> It's interesting. Um, do you want to do you want to go to like you know meditate for an hour and yeah. zen yourself back, or are you just like ready? Like, Let's do this again. I want to make another scene. No, I, I find for me in particular, um, it, it's peaks and valleys. Like when you're in the scene and you're you're ramped up, uh, but as soon as they call cut, I really just kind of like just bring it down because like okay, um, one thing that's like kind of important is like let's say it is a chaotic scene. Um, if you're like argh, super amped up, you might not, you might not realize that you like jacked your finger up and it's like, you bent it weird and you're like, you know what I mean? So it's like, if you just kind of take a step back, you'd be like, oh, I kind of tweaked my finger on that one. All right. I'll just make a fist next time. You know, like <laughs> you're kind of teching things out a little bit between takes and stuff like that. So I find in general, a lot of stunt people don't go ballistic. It's not like there's, there's a bit of a difference. Like a lot of people think stunt work is like being a daredevil. 
But a daredevil's like, I'm going to jump off this roof and I'm crazy. And a stunt person is like, all right, so we're going to do this and we're going to land here. And then we're, it's, it's a lot more technical. Break and, out the protractor. We need to see the <laughs> angles yeah. of their shit. Because ultimately the goal is, well, the thing is, is you might need to do it six times. So you want to make sure that, <laughs> you know, you want to make sure that you're good to go for six or seven takes, right? You get some hungry tick director who's just all about grilling you. Yeah, that could, that could yeah. hurt after so, a um, I don't know. Yeah. So for me, it's not really an adrenaline type thing. Like, I mean, sometimes you'll kind of get like a bit of like the butterflies or a That's bit of anxiety ask you next. ahead of time. Do you get nervous still? Mm, you know, maybe, maybe a little bit, but it's, it's not so much like, Oh, I'm going to get hurt. It's like, there's a lot of factors, you know, like, um, like there's, uh, I had to do a thing on a film called devil's gate and it wasn't like the craziest stunt, but it was tricky. So I was like, Oh man, I don't want to, like, basically, the character is handcuffed, and he has to, like, dive into the room and land on his chest. But I needed to land on a certain spot where my head lined up with the, the banister of the stairs, back of the head, obviously, um, fall so I don't, like, hit my chin on the ground. Uh, you know, there's all these things, and uh, um, I was just like, oh, okay, well, if I miss my spot, we're going to have to reset and do it again. And that just means I'm going to have to take another bump on this one, which is, it's kind of a weird, awkward position. It's not the most dangerous, but it's like your shoulders are sticking out weird. And there's lots of edges. Yeah, to your yeah body exactly. Yeah. So, um, like that kind of stuff where I'm, you're more so just like, ah, I hope I hope I nail this one on the first go, you know? And, yeah. and as it turns out, that one was great. So like we, we got it in one, which I was like, oh, sweet. Cause, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of a weird thing. <laughs> you're, you're handcuffed and, and you know, your shoulders, um, you're trying like to... Like a chicken dance, yeah. so to speak. And all your knobby parts are sticking out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Caught my shoulder. Like 20, the shoulder 24 carat stuntman so. over here. <laughs> have, you done any, have you done any high yeah. falls? There's kind of... I've done a high fall boy. workshop, but I've never actually had to do a high fall for a film. Um, but I've fallen from 10 meters, uh, Ooh, 30 feet. High. Yeah, it's like... Wow. That's, yeah. that's high. Yeah, <laughs> buddy. I can't even get in the booms at work you that know, high. Like that's yeah, it's 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 high. It's weird when you look up at it. You're like, eh, not so bad. And then you get up there and you look down. and You're like, holy shit. So, um, but there's some guys that I I work with and they're just like, yeah, let's do it. They're just ready to go. So, it's that's a cool. I, I envy those guys yeah. when the, when we got up there. Yeah, yeah, they're they're just. Yeah, they're just Once I walked on, up so. to the 10 meter diving board at Pan Am pool and I couldn't even walk out. on. The, <laughs> I just went back down the stairs. So that's over water. Yeah. Nope, just came to check it out. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's high. I'm good. <coughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Well, let's, let's, uh, I want to switch gears here and, and talk to you about some fun stuff. I'm yeah, sure. Super, I, I think we all eventually feel like we know a ton more about stunt work, stunting. Yeah. yeah like I know I, a lot about you, it. This is super educational, man. Like I, I was like, I got a friend who does stunt work in the movies but I had no idea what you did in, in comparison to my, you know, ignorance and what we see on television. But, um, can you, can you give us your top four stunts in a, in a, in a movie? Ooh. We're, we're starting this Mount Rushmore idea. I think this Mark kind of started this conversation with us a couple of weeks ago. We were, we wanted to put four major whatever's from whatever we're talking about on our movie, Mount Rushmore. So if you can't do it, that's fine. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, okay, since we talked about it already, yeah. I will say Terminator 2 is probably up there, and not okay. just for the things we talked about, but, like, there's a whole scene where Arnold annihilates multiple cars with a chain gun. Like, that's a fun day on set. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> that's a fun day anywhere. You know, I, I mean, that movie is just out of control. It was, It's just so cool. It's a, it's, so. There's a coffin full of weapons. Yeah. Like, yeah. That. Well, that's, that's in, that's in uh, is it 3? Yeah, three, right? yeah, it's three. Is it yeah, three with yeah. the? Yeah, that's the one where he's like hanging off the back oh, of the, the crane chain, or something like that. The, yeah. The, yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right. They go to Mexico to get the yeah. weapons in, in Judgment Day. Okay, uh, so well, I like two, two. You were talking about two. I love two in the motorcycle when he, yeah. like the stunt double jumps like off that like the the overpass yep. onto a so onto cool. like the LA River yeah. in, on a motorcycle in and a then Harley he lands no it. I was like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. And they sell the intensity of that of that scene when they have those close shots where they're like punching in the camera and and that truck that the T1000 driving yep. is just smashing through everything in its path like that thing just looks like a 50,000 pound steamroller coming after you <laughs> it's so good and he's just on, on his little tiny like dirt bike you know like as soon as it catches him he's dead so it just really up to the stakes it's so good all right so we got yeah. one yeah okay terminator 2 um off the top of your head i will say uh okay this isn't a film but one one um 
episode of Game of Thrones, the, the that loot train episode where that dragon is just blowing everything oh, up. Oh, when Jamie's stuck. Like, yeah, when they're stuck in the field. 12 people are being lit on fire and yeah. shit is blowing up. Like, that was a real spectacle, I thought. That was amazing. So which part of that was stunt? Like, where did the dragon... <laughs> well, you know... Um, <laughs> the dragon did his own stunts. Yeah, yeah, so I'm just, yeah he's good. Yeah. 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 Method uh, actor. <laughs> well, so they, so the, the, they were lit on fire, obviously, part of the bit. Right? Yeah, I saw the uh, some of the behind the scenes. Okay. So, yeah, obviously it's just VFX, uh, like a VFX with, with the dragon swooping in. Yep. But it was literally like they had like an incendiary device and these guys were ready to go. And when it went poof, and blew up, like it was basically like, hey, we're lighting 15 guys on fire. And if I, I believe in the behind the scenes, you can see that each person has like two people allocated to them. So like that was like almost 100 people, you know, in, involved, like – directly involved that's not counting like the pyro folks and, it's a wedding and all that full stuff. of people that's crazy so like you know but like that's just people are watching i mean there's so much chaos going on like you need eyes on people that I'm might sure, might yeah. have been hurt or whatever the case is but man that was as amazing. a viewer i don't think we appreciate how many people it takes for that split second you don't explosion. right and then you think you know how it's done and then you form this opinion and then you sit in front of a professional and find out you know there was a giant incendiary device that blew up 15 people at once, and that's even cooler. Yeah, it's okay, we got two. So. Okay, we, we got, got two. two. Oh, man. Okay, I'm just going to like roll the dice yeah, here and yeah. see like what jumps out. I, I reserve the right to change my mind. Yes, of course, you do. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. um, okay, I'm going to throw – okay, because I was talking about the 8711 stunt team. Um, they oh. – Oh, yeah. yeah. I was waiting for that to happen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, we're good. Uh, yeah, no yeah. worries. That's what happens when you record um, in your living room. <laughs> but, like, yeah, just like – because cause what they do on those films are like the really uh, the really crazy specific sequencing, you know, where it's like, OK, I think it's I think this one might not might not specifically be them. But like in Fast Five, when they're doing that insane car car chase and they're dragging that safe behind them and the oh, safe is like on the bridge, yeah. exploding bridges. And stuff. <laughs> That's like, amazing. What the fuck? Like that is just insane. <laughs> So, and then, um, I'm going to, I'm okay. Since we talked about these ones too, um, I'm going to, I'm going to like split them and I'll just say like the John Wick slash raid films. Cause there's, they're yeah. so fun. And okay. While we're at it, I'm also going to throw dread in there too. Ooh, Wait, which like one? Dread? Yeah. So like Carl dread. Urban dread. dread. Stallone dread? Carl Urban dread. Oh, Carl, Carl Urban, yeah. Urban dread. Yeah. yeah. That was like the raid. That was similar to a uh, style to the raid. I feel like exactly. I feel like dread and the raid are very similar, except instead of like a, a team of like police officers you got an army of one yeah. you know well and actually there's two army of two yeah destroying an entire building all the way to the top like man that's so cool it is a really yeah. great the, the it's a thrill ride going up yeah. a floor and that motorcycle it. chase before they get into peach tree uh yeah. apartments yeah. like where guys are getting run over and stuff like man really really cool and then like the, the slow-mo drop when they threw those guys out and they splat down in the middle of the courtyard there's that split. movie was awesome I thought that was so cool. I saw it twice in the theater. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. I haven't done that since Titanic. Yeah. Um, I think it was cool nope. that they incorporated like the Titanic. slow motion as a narrative element. It wasn't like, this is cool. He's in slow motion. It was like, there was a reason for it. The the drug made everything, made time slow down. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And it, it allowed for the slow-mo cam. Yeah, and it allowed yeah for exactly. Be, it was a yeah. fun way to play with it. It was. And it paced you, right? It set you up and then it brought yep. you down and yep. it was, all right. Yeah. Well, let's move on to some more fun topics, some stuff that I know that you've got some great opinions on and that we can all share. Um, how many of us have seen The Joker? Have any of us uh, seen it yet? Yeah, you no. went and saw it. I know you asked me yep. and I didn't get it. I saw it. Okay, so I'm just like, I know I'm going to be completely blown away by it because everybody who I, I trust their opinion on, the majority of you are in this room, uh, it says it's absolutely amazing. It's a, and it's also a movie about. I was going to talk about it on the Real Debaters episode this weekend. Oh, <laughs> the well, film okay. We can talk and talk about we it again. Talk, whatever, it's yeah. fine. We can we can do whatever we want. Yeah. Um, five hundred and forty-eight million dollars as of this morning. Wow, that is ridiculous. It is on point to be the most successful R-rated film in history. Oh wow! Yeah, that's amazing. That's uh, my. Have you have you seen it? You I haven't seen, seen it yet. You guys haven't I, seen it. No. My word, have you seen it, BJ? I have not, and I want to. I just want to say, don't try not to like overhype it. Yeah. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, I had, I had very little expectation going into it, but um, it, it, it puts you in a weird place emotionally. And I think that's it. it like, is I that mean, its purpose? Because I've heard it that's does. What it's its purpose is. is to put you in that place. And like I said, like comic book movies, you know, I have a few, there's like, I laugh throughout the comic movies, right? This one, I maybe laughed once. And it wasn't even like a a chuckle. It was just like, oh, that's uncomfortable. Mm. 
Interesting. And that's what a lot of people have said is that it's it's a it's a kind of a play on our current I guess what's society. the word? climate and society, but what he's going through. Like when we talked about it, when we reviewed the trailer, we looked at it like this is a guy, this is society's reject, right? Mm-hmm. And we're rejecting like society's rejecting more and more well, people we, now. Society so created it, the Joker basically. Yeah. And nope. well, society failed him and in, in failing him yeah, is the creation. The yeah, yeah. Okay. The, the things I'm seeing online and everything are not, not spoiling the movie per se, but they're actually making me more excited about it yes. because I keep hearing um, like that, that you don't laugh. There's like a, a couple uncomfortable laughs. Um, somebody else I said, said that, that some people just aren't good. Like smart people are going to get a lot of it, but people that don't pay attention aren't going to get it. Um, and then another one said the, the final scene explained. So apparently the final scene is, is somewhat of a, of a, of a very mind fucky kind of thing. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. I, I don't feel that spoils it. That just makes me like super excited to go and see yeah, it. No, I, we're going to go see it. Cause I was going to do the th- three of us. We can get tickets and I'll pay for the same movie twice in one day. But I did that once. I took Mark to Hobbs and Shaw, yeah. and I bought tickets for the day I said we should go, and then I didn't buy tickets for the day that we were going. <laughs> so I ended up paying like forty bucks to see Hobbs and Shaw. It's pretty nice. Funny. Uh, what are you excited about for it? Like you're, you're um, still for me. Um, I'd say the thing that makes me most interested in wanting to see it is is the polarizing reception for it. People seem to love it, and other people are like, I don't really care for this, and I don't know why everyone's so excited. And I I always like when things like that come up because I want to weigh in on it myself. Well, it's like the Rotten yeah. Tomatoes score, right? The critic score is crazy yeah, or yeah, the yeah. audience score is crazy and the critic score is like, yeah, eh, yeah you know exactly. I mean? there's, there's, a, there's something, there's yeah. what's going on there, here. Yeah. Like, it's, what, for sure. yeah. it's like when you hear a movie gets booed at Cannes and you're like, why would that, you know, why did that happen? I got to check it out. Yeah. You know? And yeah. is that because it's not, you know, hoity-toity enough for Cannes or is it? I don't know. Um, I, I know that Only God Forgives, Nicholas Winding Refn's film yep. a few years ago, yep. got booed. And uh, it's a bad it, movie. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't care for it. I don't think I would stand up and boo in the theater about it, though. <laughs> yeah, but it did make yeah. me. Uh, I did want to check it out. My curiosity was piqued. So it's just that situation where I want to. I want to weigh in on it myself. Well, every was, time they say something's polarizing, because if you yes. end up on the on the good side of it, then it's going to be rewarding. And if, if not, then man, no nothing yeah. gained. No harm, no, no foul. No harm, right? no foul. Right? Yeah. 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 Uh, didn't he do Driven before? Drive. Only, drive. Yeah, he did Drive. Driven's with Only Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, drive it's is a really with, uh, bad race car Ryan, movie. Ryan Gosling. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think that's. I think people were anticipating a lot, and then when Only God Forgives came out, it was some. Yeah. What is it about a kickbox? Like a uh, guy yeah, it's kind of like a Thai crime, religious, existential kind yeah. of thing. It gets yeah. really out there. All right. Well, yeah. when we see the Joker, well, I guess we'll have more talk about it, Mark. Right? Yes, yeah? we will. I keep waiting for you to tell me when we're going. Uh, I'll figure it out after. The How show. many cheeseburgers do you think he's bringing? Oh, that's a that's a three cheeseburger film. <laughs> that's a, that's a, well, Min- maybe minimum, four. minimum maybe three, four. minimum three. Uh, Martin Scorsese versus Marvel. Have, has anybody else heard about this? No. How Explain, please. Heard a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so Martin Scorsese. In the, the the short version is he was asked what his thoughts are on Marvel movies and comic book movies, and he outright said they're not cinema. Ooh. Can you get behind him on that, or can you think? Like, do you think he's a complete nutter moron? Because I think that might not be the cinema that he. Makes. Well, that's what I think. He's the old guard, right? Yeah, he's the old guard, right? He's a, but society and cinema evolves it, over time. Well, it definitely evolves, but I think if you have five, like, how many people you think are on an Avengers movie? Like, oh god, total. Do you see the working? credits, man? Total, the credits are crazy. Oh, total, yeah, like. like Hundreds, like it could be close to a thousand. I would, I would say a thousand people. When you have, when, when you have a thousand people making, and what I still think in game is one of the best movies ever made, um, making something that perfect, cinema, 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 right? It doesn't matter where it's coming from or what story it's being pulled from. It, it that that is, that is a great way of celebrating a lot of different aspects of film with CGI and great camera work and cinematography and all that. Just because it's not a story that you're used to making, Mr. Scorsese does not discount it, its merit in any way, shape, or form. Who, who, what do you guys think? Yeah, I think that um, just because a film is tentpole and popcorn doesn't mean it can't be cinema. So, um, you know, I, 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 interestingly, though, I feel like there is a difference between like calling a... a a project like a film or a mm-hmm. movie you know movies are to me generally like more fun and uh, a film is more like uh, sounds, more seri- sounds more serious yeah yeah exactly. yeah, yeah. 
but they're both they're both yeah. cinematic experiences mm -hmm. uh, you know and it's just you're really just splitting hairs and trying to define things but. i also think he's a little pissy because the irishman isn't getting the play in the movie theaters that netflix <laughs> hoped it would like he's they they originally had a run i think for two weeks and then most of the major theaters in new york won't let them air it now mm. so he's got to take it to broadway actually so the irishman will play on Broadway before it plays in the theater in New York. Yeah, that's that's the day and age, though. And we discussed this earlier about um, with the formats that people are consuming media and movies with now. Yeah, with the cult classics. That's right, yeah. Really yeah. Is that... Um, that maybe some of those stories that Scorsese told are not the stories that people want to go sit and watch on a big screen. They want to they wanna watch it in a more intimate, intimate, intimate environment of their, their home or something like that, that to consume it. Um, whereas a big budget action movie you want to consume with loud sounds, big screen, I, I, like I, it, the best movies that are, I don't know, ta I, off the top of my head, a movie like Rain Man that I remember seeing three times in the theater when it came out years ago. Great performances, great movie. That's not the kind of movie I'd go to see it's in the theater, theater anymore. Totally I'd love it, but movie. I'd love it at home. I want to contribute to that movie somehow. So I would purchase it to watch at home, but I don't want to sit in a theater and see it maybe. Yeah. yeah. You know, I don't want to sit and watch the Godfather trilogy in a, in a theater. I want to watch it in my living room. Well, and when you say Martin, he is the old guard. The old guard thinks you go to a theater to watch every movie. Yeah. Where now it's like, yes, you're right, Mark. Like sitting at home, watching a more intimate, serious I can pay attention to this. It's not a shared environment. Some baby's not crying. Someone's not on their phone. Someone doesn't have cheeseburgers beside you. I think, that's a, I think that's a compliment at times, though, is that I want to be able to focus on this because I know it's important. Yes. The, it, the, the small moments are very important. Give it the attention that everybody yeah. who made it demands well, that you It's give. like that uh, when we were talking about a few weeks ago, the Mr. Rogers movie. Like, I don't want to see that in theaters either. No. And I want to see that movie, but yeah. I'm not going to see it in well, theaters. Because I wish there's a way you could cry. contribute money towards... Like without having to buy it, like I, I'd, I'd love to be able to watch a new release at home and pay for it. Yeah, same. You know, I think that'd be a great concept for streaming, and I'll pay the twenty bucks to watch it. But if I can watch it right when it's getting released, that that's a really interesting concept. I mean, money's money, right? Like if you're willing to pay the theater price, although you're getting into a very dangerous atmosphere where, like, skip the dishes. Let's just say, for example, we all love it, but it is going to it, uh, delivery food delivery services will eventually be the downfall of the the brick and mortar restaurant. So if you're able to watch Avengers on an 80 inch screen TV at home and that's good enough for you, you're not going to go to the theater and then the theater is going to be out of business. And, you know, as much as yeah, we all it's, say, it's we'd a, rather watch. there's a ripple effect. Yes. Here, right? yeah, yeah, it does. It's like how Amazon got rid of the bookstore and now Amazon's building bookstores. Right, like that's the irony in that. But maybe that's just a time for for movie theaters to thin out. Maybe like it used to be, there's a movie theater everywhere yeah, in Winnipeg. True. Now yeah. there's like four theaters in Winnipeg. Really, you know, it's like reducing down. Well, it's so, like arcades. Arcades used to be crazy. Like when I was growing up, like there used to be one at every mall. Now, you know, everyone games at home or at games on their phone. There's no need to go to an arcade. Like and the video game industry is bigger than it ever has yep. been. And that's how I think the movie industry and guys like Scorsese are hanging on to this old grumpy mentality of like, put it in the theater. It needs its 90 day run. You can't be considered for an award, which is him when he says it's not cinema. I think that's what he, I, I'm assuming that's what he's getting at is that it's not doing what old cinema has always done. Right. It's, mm. it's small screen cinema. It's streaming cinema. It's a film. It's a movie, whatever the fuck you want to call it. But you know, and w if, which go ahead. Yeah. I was thinking, before movies had sound, the people who made silent movies said that doesn't need sound. Yeah. Before they had color, they said you don't need color. Exactly. The guy, the guy who made those, who made those things, those, uh, the, the, the dialogue at the end of yeah. the beginning of the scene lost his job because he couldn't do that right. anymore. Before there was visual effects, we didn't need them. Like it's just, it, things evolve. Yeah. You'll create more Maybe jobs eventually with, with the things yeah, that help. Because for every job that, that does, gets taken away on one side of things, yeah. there's any number of jobs that get created on the other side of things. Very true. Very true. Sub question. Robert Downey Jr. has told Disney he does not want Disney going for an Oscar run for best actor for Iron Man. For oh. Iron Man Endgame. Do you think he should have? Do you think there should be an Oscar campaign for it? Do you think there shouldn't be? Like, is that... It, when you say tentpole BJ in, mm. in, in popcorn movie, yes, that's exactly what it is. Mm. But his performance, like I, my, I can say for certain that if Iron Man wasn't the first movie and Robert Downey Jr. wasn't Iron Man, I probably wouldn't give as many fucks as I do about comic book movies as I do today. He is th that whole role. 
I feel from every movie he's been in deserves to be nominated. Like you can't nominate him for every Iron Man movie, but the accumulation of his character to end game is worthy of a best Oscar. In my opinion, Degree, agree, disagree. Anybody? Somebody? I, uh, I think I, it's tough. It's you, hard. You can't I, yeah. grade him on, on his full arc across no. multiple films because every, every year that would put, like, if, if you were to approach it like that, it would put all the other performers in their maybe, let's say, standalone film at I'm, a disadvantage. Okay, yeah I'm, yeah, I'm confusing you. What I'm saying is is if you look at him from start to finish, just give him credit for Endgame mm -hmm. because Endgame is where it popped for me. Right. Where he his, his, his chaplain acting came out for me. Like, there was just something more there. So, yeah, you can't, you, obviously, yeah, you, you, what you're saying is true. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jeez, I don't know. It it always it always comes down to you know the the group of nominees, I guess you could say. And interestingly, I guess like there has been a little bit of talk about Joaquin Phoenix maybe being nominated as well, which yeah, kind of right. makes it interesting because you know for all of this non cinematic chat, like that's two people it's that possibly could be, yeah. you know, yeah. nominated for the pinnacle of acting in a film. Was Heath Ledger the only person in a comic movie to win an Oscar? That's a good question. I think so. Right? Uh, I'm pretty sure you're right about that. I mean, in a performance? Yeah, as, a, as an actor. As an actor. I think so. Well, it's it, it's like, you know, the, mu the, the music awards never really fully give rap and hip hop its dues, right? There's lots of great stuff coming out of there. And then when they look at, you know, when you look at the award shows and, 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 and the festivals, like to, to give Endgame, an, to give Robert Downey Jr. an Oscar for Endgame doesn't cheapen the nature of the award, in my opinion, but I think that's the fear, right? It's like it's handing it out to this this I, fake comic book popcorn movie. I think we're trying to to take like square pegs and stick them into round holes with some of this. Is like music you mentioned. Music back in the day was you know a couple of genres or not even a genre. It was music, and and nowadays you can't compare a, a hip hop album to a country album to a classical album. Um, you all have to award them in their own categories. And there is those categories within the Academy, sort of, but there's it hasn't divided into enough genres, I don't think. So is it going to be the best action movie? Like, you know, maybe that needs to happen. Maybe the, the different genres of movies need to sort of divide off. Yeah. Well, best actor in an action movie. Yeah. Best yeah. Act, actor. Maybe the, the awards need to adapt well, diversify so there was a bit of controversy a few years ago with the martian which won best comedy yes. or musical and people are like that's not a comedy or a musical but no. uh but it's fucking funny it is funny it has its yeah moments. it has its moments right but the, but a lot of people were speculating that they thought they would have a stronger bid at oh, winning for okay. that for that nomination as opposed to going up against like the best film heavy hitters and then uh, they won so i don't know maybe it was a Biggest you know. kid on the playground, so to speak. Yeah, right? kind of. Okay. Yeah. Well, didn't La La Land win something for it won musical? It won, well, won best. No, wait, didn't they? Th oh, geez, that the was the, that picture? was that was the other thing where uh, they thought one movie won and then it. Ended that up was the, that was the Warren Beatty fuck uh -huh. up. That was yeah. Where... So who was the winner? I can't remember now who got. Oh, it. I was maybe La La Black, Land won. Black Black Black. Oh, La La Land was. I think they. I think they it was lost. best picture. Yeah, they went up and then. Then they got it pulled from them, right? But they that was a, a case. If you look at that, there's no way that it's the best picture. No, it's not. It's a great yeah. musical. Not best, not best picture. But it, it won uh, best actress, best original musical, or best director, and best cinematography. Mm. Which is a lot. Yeah. Like that, that's that's called cleaning house. Okay, one last thing before we get into the would you rather's because that's what I want to end on. Um, <laughs> so there was a big meeting this weekend, and it happened at Disney Studios. And a, a gentleman named, well, he's known as Van City Reynolds on Instagram, but <laughs> yep. we all know Ryan him as Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds had a meeting with Disney this weekend. Ooh. And two things were confirmed today. One, Deadpool does have a place in the MCU. They just yes. don't know nice. how to bring him in. So I'll have a question about that. But two, the Marvel writers for Deadpool, sorry, the writers for Deadpool have agreed with Marvel that it will be R-rated going into the third one. Oh, wow. That's They're going to keep it R-rated. So we're That's not going to have... The, the, the recipe's not going to get fucked with because there's a big deal there. But my question is, where do you think Deadpool should show up first? Whose movie? Should it be an end credit? Should it be just a random scene? Should it be like a Brad Pitt cameo in the second one where he was like flying into the wires? You know, like, how do you bring... End credit. And Do you think end credit? End credit. It's got to be the last thing and people will want to stay to see it because it's going to be Deadpool in there. 
I think it's that'll be great. That'd be perfect. But I don't know which movie. I'm not sure which movie, but I think it should be. Like athletic. you've got the Eternals, you've got the yeah. horror Doctor Strange coming up. You've got like it's obviously not going to be in Black Widow because that's already done. Mm-hmm. But you've got a lot. You've yeah. even got the streaming shows. Like you could throw them into Loki if you wanted. I was going to gonna say you can now debut them on one of the Disney Plus, right? You know, streaming platforms, and because that's going to be huge too. I would. That I would. might be how they sell. Like a, a, a one of the Disney like shows. I mean, have well, Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool do a cameo, or as an end credit to maybe the end of this the season show up and do that. I think Disney's going to change the game with those shows that are coming out. Oh, that's until now the the TV versions or streaming versions of all those shows have been subpar and and they didn't have the big name actors in them, and now you're going to get that. Oh, it's, you're totally. And uh, I have an idea for a whole podcast de- dedicated to streaming. BJ, do you have any ideas of where? I, I think Martin's probably right. I feel like they're going to make people wait till the end of a movie or, or kind of like shoehorn them into a fun little spot where they're just going to be drip feeding you before they give you the big payoff. Yeah, so I, I think that's probably. They'll probably, probably make accurate. references throughout the whole movie. Then all of a sudden at the end, they'll be like, oh, there he is. He's finally here. And yeah, boom. I mean, they could do it. They might do a little fun thing where uh, it was in uh, Logan where. No, sorry, not Logan. Uh, I know it was in Deadpool too when he when he like shows up and he opens the door and all the X Men are talking. Oh, like, yeah, that was that was funny. <laughs> you know, they might do something like that in another movie where he's the guy in the room and, and you just see him for a second. Or, you know, or they like just tease him up a bit. Young maybe. Professor <laughs> X. That, that would be good, yeah. actually. Yeah. yeah, that that and that's kind of something kind of weird in there. Or like in Deadpool, yeah. where Logan's in, in like he has the statue of Logan just impaled in the wood. <laughs> And just spinning in a circle, you know what I mean? Like that's just like something like that. Like some scene that they put him into, like uh, the the whatever character it is is like I don't know, like a studio, a movie studio, and then you get a, a glimpse of like Deadpool's in there signing a contract or something. <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah. Yeah. Or like you walk into a broom closet and he's jerking off to a picture of Wolverine, right? <laughs> like just like true <laughs> dirty <it>. Deadpool. <laughs> wrong, wrong room. No, wrong, yeah. wrong room, right? And then it's like, oh my god, there he is. And then when you really bring him in, Occupado, Occupado, <laughs> totally. <laughs> but like when you when you do it, like obviously a PG thirteen, we all know you get the one f bomb, right? There's your there's your there's that your would fuck. be it. That would be it. So he's got to say the fuck in whatever movie he's in, so that it still still stays PG thirteen. What movie was that that I saw where the fuck was right at the very end of an end credit? They just dropped one f bomb. I can't remember what it was. I just it 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 made me just that much more. It lo- I forgot what movie it was. I love that that part of the movie. We I, did do a good podcast on that. We yeah. did, yeah. No, we totally did. <laughs> that um, never aired. <laughs> the, oh, that was the never aired podcast? Yeah, unfortunately. Oh, that was a good one. There was some ones that, yeah. Um, okay, so before we let you go, BJ, I figured mm-hmm. we'd have some fun with some Would You Rathers. That basically, this is the testing ground for everything we're going to be doing. So I'm super happy you're here because I haven't seen you forever. And two, yeah. you're great. Thanks for having pig. me. Yeah, yeah. Dude, no, dude, this was, this was great. Um, okay, so the first Would You Rather, um, I posted this on Insta the other day, but I didn't get much response. Learn magic from Harry Potter or become a vampire with Edward from Twilight. If you had to choose, and we'll start how we always start. We'll start with Martin. I commented on the Instagram you thing, did. and you I did. said, I don't consider Twilight, like vampires don't sparkle for me, so that's <laughs> it's definitely going to be magic. That's, there's, there's no, it's a no-brainer for me. <laughs> My vampires do not sparkle. All right, that's that's. Have that's, you have you have you thought about this like long form? No, it was it was a quick decision. I saw it. I'm like, nope, that's no, nope, yeah, that's that's the way I'm going. I'm okay, going, I'm going to Harry Potter. Easily. All right. So so you 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 okay? But I if you if you said if you said uh, Lestat, Lestat from Interview Lestat, the yeah, Vampire, yeah, okay. I would have definitely picked Lestat well, from I, Interview I, the Vampire. I know because and that's like you. I picked one really cool wizard and one horrible vampire. Like I didn't. <laughs> it wasn't like I was. I, I didn't. It wasn't want, weighted very well. Yeah. Right? No. It wasn't. <laughs> Who might make a good Batman? We never know. But well, it's, the, it's doubtful. But we all thought Ledger was going to fail at that. Well, okay. But. I'll give you my take on it. I thought about okay, yeah, Leviosa, right? You know, mm. figuring out different spells and shit. That would be great. But I'm still vulnerable. I'm still a human wizard, right? I've got wizardry, but as a vampire. I don't die. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that okay. Dude is a pedophile. I don't have I'm just to gonna say that. I don't have to hang out with Edward after. I just have to hang out with him long enough to. He's teach dating me a shit high school kid. And turn me. That's it. That's all. Well, yeah. <laughs> Edward is dating. A, like, what do you have in common with a high school have kid? You, I, I, I can't. I can't do it. Like Joe Rogan said, like this dude's like what three hundred. The girl's like fifteen. Like what? What's going on? Well, here? it's highly illegal, but still. I mean, <laughs> whatever. And Mark, what do you think? Are you, I, you know what? I was torn on this one too. I said, um, I'd much rather be a vampire, but. I'm not by I'm really I was gonna say not by Edward I was team Jacob all along (laughs) and um so I went off script I said I'll become a vampire if uh Kate Beckinsale will turn me that's right you wanted underworld (laughs) that's a good vampire that's a good vampire yeah that's my caveat 
All right. With the guest, BJ, what would what would you want? Yeah, it really does come down to being able to do cool shit versus living forever, I think. Like, yeah. the immortality yeah. is the one thing where you're like, well, then I don't have to die ever, but... Um, you could still die, technically. Imagine how good yeah. of a stuntman yeah, you could be. Yeah, you're vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could... We <laughs> all film at night, though? The greatest, <laughs> yeah, greatest yeah. stuntman <laughs> ever. <laughs> Um, Gotta get that SPF 200 for the daytime shots. I'm leaning magic, though. Well, yeah. yeah. Magic, I, magic, yeah. vampire, vampire. You can just heal okay. yourself if you ever get hurt on set, right? Yeah. I'd probably just, if I could fly, I'd, you know, do all that stuff. I, I don't know. Uh, It'd yeah, be pretty know. awesome. I feel like there's a lot of, like, educational component, though, that's required. Like, if you're yeah, going you to learn magic, school? you're going right back into the meat grinder of learning <laughs> yeah, for a you're, while. You're, and, and I would love a, to go to Hogwarts, though. Come on now. Who wouldn't want to go to Hogwarts? You know, here's if I'm, the thing. I'm 37, I'll still go to Hogwarts. If you're the chosen few, it's great. <laughs> but otherwise, you're just like you're just a student with books trudging through the aisles. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, you know. Like, yeah, I don't. I, I may be lazy. I just want to sit home on my couch and be a vampire. <laughs> 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 I don't want to go back to school. Yeah, it, and so it's a one and done scenario. I need to know like the <laughs> basics. Like, where do I get my blood? Um, good sunscreen. Um, proper blinds from my house right like these well, you don't are, need sunscreen you know, as a as a vampire from twilight you sparkle in yeah the, in the well, daytime. that's true yeah, yeah. So i am i'm not you're, you're i'm not gonna, blade i mean so. i've seen that rave scene from blade and i mean i'm down with that yeah <laughs> that's the thing. if you said the vampire from blade will turn you i'm down with that too that's what i that's yeah. i need a good blood yeah, rave yeah all right i'll, I'll tweak my there's, there's an asterisk to my answer forward. there's an asterisk to it all right second question uh who would you rather live like jordan belfort from wolf of wall street or tony stark from iron man iron man stark 100 percent I feel like you can do all the Jordan Belfort things with as Tony Stark, <laughs> except you get a cool suit that flies and shoots, you know. Repulsor. And you're wicked smart. Yeah. Like, you're <laughs> wicked smart. I, yes, I feel that you could do tons of cocaine in the Iron Man suit. I'm doing, I'm, would be the I'm going Tony. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, you're, it, if, if you're saying that Stark doesn't do blow, <laughs> I'm calling bullshit. Yeah. At least a young Stark. You're not, you're not yeah. figuring out. <laughs> yeah, very yeah. young yeah. Stark. He's not figuring out time travel and coffee. Like, no, that's, 100%. Yeah. All right, yeah, no worries. What about you, Mike? What did you pick? I picked Stark, too. I mean, yeah. I just, Jordan Belfort lives a life to excess, right? As where Tony Stark has some sort of, you know, admirable qualities to him. You know, I, young Tony Stark, I'm sure, was, you know... Well, there were times when, in you know. one where he lived the life of excess, right? Yes. In Iron Man 1, he was kind of that, that playboy, rich playboy who Which lived the life of they needed because they had to launch it, right? But, <clears throat> you know, he becomes this this decent human being mm-hmm. after a while who's looking out for more than number one. Um, but I would like... I, I, I Obviously, the right answer is Tony, but coming from a sordid past where, like, I've been at those party not those parties where they're hucking midgets you know on like you know on the call room floor but like the crazy parties where you can get away with everything and then you have all the money i i it's i'm torn <coughs> i think though if you're tony stark you could probably designer drug your own like create your own designer yeah, party make some slow-mo drug, right <laughs> yeah. like basically limitless you know you, okay, yeah, this on yeah. steroids yeah. yeah no you're right you're right there is there's benefits you wouldn't that. have to be like hoping for some <laughs> some lewds <laughs> I think I think the way to weight that question a little more is it is it you would have to come with a little bit of the conscience that that Tony carries with him in the films yeah, yeah. so you couldn't just be full degenerate all the time you know yeah, like you can't piss cocaine. in the suit 24-7 yeah. like he doesn't want and Iron Man do I'm just trying to yeah. picture Tony Stark blowing blow into Marco Roby's ass. <laughs> I, I, that's, you, that's all you I thought about. between blowing and blow. There was a good pause and I'm like, well, what's going on? Why are you, why are you desecrating the man you just nominated for an Oscar? Like, <laughs> okay, second last question. Uh, who would win in a fight? Leonidas from 300 and Marv from Sin wait, City. Wait, wait. Can I, can I propose um, an yes. alternative? You want audible? Here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would that. like, at the count of three, we all at the same time say who we think would. I don't want to see oh. if anyone gets swayed. Ooh. I just want to see... Who you think wins in the moment? Just say it. All on right. The count of three. Okay, you okay? count it down. All right, ready? One, two, three. Le- Marv. 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 <laughs> Marv. Dude took bullets, man. He took. He got shot okay, a bunch so of who times. Said, who said Leonidas? Leonidas? I said Marv. Leonidas. Marv. Yeah, so yeah. All right. Now, now we can, you know. Keep now we can discuss. You have thing. just created the better way to play this game going <clears throat> forward. All right. So thank you. We will do that <laughs> in the future. See, Go I ahead. like this one. This one was a a, a bit of a, a more balanced. Yeah. Uh, it two was. Characters. Yes. Yeah. It, yeah. it was a harder choice. Yeah. Uh, Leonidas has got all the the technique and skills, but Marv is just a tank that never <laughs> yeah. ever stops. <laughs> just doesn't run out of gas. Leonidas is going to come at him with a sword and a spear, 
and Marv that the is best literally you got? <laughs> eating shotgun blasts to the face. Like it's just it's just a little bit skewed, I think, for Marv to get the W. And he's still alive. One of them, one of them's dead. One of them's still uh, still alive. Yeah, that's so, true. Yeah, you know, All like right. that guy is a tank. Oh, he is. He's a brick shit house. Yeah. And Mickey Rourke is I, an unbelievable pick. For I love that. Leonidas. I just feel Me like too. I feel like if Marv's coming at you and and his goal is to destroy you, that's tough. That's like levels above Xerxes and his gang. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They didn't but need the three hundred to stop Xerxes. They just needed Marv <laughs> yeah, in exactly. that in the in the yeah. in the Battle Thermopylae. Just yeah. Marv, just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just just <laughs> plug him in the bottleneck. <laughs> Did they have like battle elephants and shit? Well, they totally <laughs> had battle elephants. Yeah, and he'll say the same thing. That the best you got. <laughs> Boom. I I'm picking Lena. Okay, tank, great, right? Yeah, no, Marv is one hundred percent just balls to the wall, br- brutal. I'm using that in my advantage as Leonidas because there is skill and there is years of training there. So where Marv just drops it in the sixth and runs until everything is broken, Leonidas has got the agility and the skill to be like, all right, I'll counter, right? So that's kind of why I'm siding on, you know, the the fucking Spartan of all Spartans. Mark, what did you... I, I'm going with military tactics and knowledge yeah, okay. over sheer brute force and ignorance. I mean, if Marv <laughs> gets in one good hit, it's done, right? Like, there's no, nobody's yeah, smarter than I, I'm not saying... Like, that's the thing. Like, you know, if, if it comes down to this thing where... You know, it's it's Leonid. It's kind of like the mountain versus the the red viper, where you know Leonidas is circling and yeah. cutting his Achilles tendon and <laughs> hamstringing yeah. him. Like maybe maybe he maybe he puts him down for the count, but I, I just don't see Marv dying. giving up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see no. it like Sung Tzu versus the Hulk, right? You know, the art of war. The, the Hulk versus wins. just sheer brute force. <laughs> well, it's like Batman versus the Hulk, right? Like it's just Batman would have that contingency plan. You'd think. Because he has a contingency plan for every other person yeah. in the Justice League. Yeah, Iron but Man. Right. Iron Man found a way to battle the Hulk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Last question. Uh, yeah, you're good. Do you have I'm good. You, you said the exact yeah. same thing. Oh, like, yeah. I just like Sorry, yeah. he would he would cut him and be like that the best you got, and then yeah. you keep coming, 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 and eventually you just you just you get yeah. you just get demolished by that train. I love the split. That was great. Yeah, it was great. <clears throat> I think so, we gotta. It's yeah, always good for some debate. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a note of this whole thing. BJ needs to. I'm going to hit you up for some fucking production notes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last one. Knowing what you know of their films so far, who would you want to direct your biopic, Martin Scorsese or Steven Spielberg? Your life. How would you want to portray it on screen? That's ro- that's a hard one. This is yeah. a good one. This is a good one. Yeah. All right. Are we going to do the same thing? Yeah, we are, of course. Yeah, no, this <laughs> is, we're, we're not just going to one and done it. Right that makes it tougher. I can't mull it over as much now. But yeah, okay, I know who I'm going to go with. All right. Okay. <sighs> okay. It hurts, though. Somebody count it down. Uh, BJ? All right. So after three, okay? Yeah. One, two, three. Scorsese. 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 <laughs> We both think the same. We both think that we, yeah. we went this way again. Oh my god, that's think, insane! Yeah. yeah, all right, Martin, go first. I just I think Scorsese would would capture like those those crazy elements of you know when we first met those crazy elements of my life really well. Y- yes, you know what I mean. Like that's what I want in my movie. I want that raw, gritty kind of, just in your face kind of. This is a shitstorm that's just gonna f- go off the train one day. You know what I mean? Like it just I think that that's what I love about his movies. Okay, yeah. all right. I think my my life story is a movie, not a film. <laughs> to, to, go, to hearken back to what BJ said, oh, I don't yeah, need yeah, like yeah, a yeah. dark cinematic film. Mm. You know, I, it's it's you movie. don't need a Hen- you're not Henry Hill. I, it's a big budget <laughs> movie that Spielberg's directing. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, and that's why I'm torn. That's why I was torn. Actually, it's hard. Like that, yeah. either director would be great. It's yeah. Just, oh, uh, just, yeah. Here's the thing. The, what immediately came to my mind is is uh, is if Spielberg was doing my biopic. It would be the patented Spielberg push in with wind in my hair. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and a little sense of the fantastical. Yeah. Scorsese's going to make me look really cool, I think. Yeah. So oh, it's yeah. going to be like, all I'll be wearing really a leather jacket yeah. and shit like that, cool, you know, smoking like, a cigarette. You're going to be shots. the best of whatever you are in a Scorsese <laughs> film, where a Spielberg film is going to capture the whole essence of you, I feel. Yeah. And I think you might get off looking like a nicer guy in a Spielberg film. Yeah. But Scorsese will. will it won't hide the warts, uh, but you'll look really cool as you as you <laughs> lipstick on a pig. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I think that's you know Scorsese is going to look at make it look real nice. But uh, yeah, I guess that's why I went with him. Before you give us ours, Mike, because this came up actually today, it, it, is it biopic or biopic? 
Well, I say biopic. I say biopic. I separate the two as in bio picture or autograph, bio, biographical picture. Yeah. But the, if you want to put them all, you know, end to end in a in a sentence, biopic would be the full word. But biopic is the is the broken oh. words separated. I can get behind that. You can get behind that. Yeah. But I actually had a discussion with somebody today about it. I I, I love biopic. I would love to start saying it, but people won't know what the hell I'm talking about. It just sounds better. Um, Spielberg. Like I think Jurassic Park, I think try <laughs> is your story. <laughs> is, is definitely, yes. Littered, littered with Dilophosauruses as a young man. Are no, you the, I, which which dinosaur are you in the um, Jurassic Park? I'm a I'm a like the, the little packies, <laughs> <laughs> the copies, well, the, the copies, the ankle yeah. biters. Yeah, um, I just I the, the the triumphant ending and the the goodness, I guess, is what I'm getting at, right? He's, he's got like a very there's a there's an innocence to his films. There is an yeah, innocence, think, even yeah. in Saving Private Ryan, which is an ultimately violent film. There is still the innocence of the young soldiers and the innocence of Matt Damon and, and Private Ryan, and and so he he will. He will. Well, he finds hi- the goodness in, in that in that shit, right? Either the goodness or like the 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 bullet points of a person. So. As much as Scorsese, yes, like you say, BJ, it'll make me look like a badass, right? Like I'll never be cooler yeah. than Martin Scorsese directing something about me. But I don't want all of me out there. I want the best version of oh, me out there. I want all of me out there. Yeah, it's it's both no, the good and the bad. Yeah, no, both it, the good it, and the bad. Isn't that the opposite? Like you're kind of saying Spielberg pulls the good out of a character, where Scorsese tends to pull the darkness out of a character. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't understand what you're saying, though. Well, I'm just saying that's the opposite. You oh, want, yeah. You, you know, uh, we want to go for pulling the goodness out of yes, a, a character yeah. as opposed to Martin wants this These guys dark side. These guys are fucking underground. Dark side I, want the dark, I, want, I want you to love all of me. You know what I mean? If you can't handle me at my worst, then you don't deserve my best. Oh, Marilyn Monroe in the corner. <laughs> well, on that note, um, BJ, thank you so much. Thank you very for, much for having me. This is yes, the first one. You. I'm so happy you got to do I want you back for other shows so yep. if you're we're gonna Anytime, do something yeah. about Strata and we're gonna get you on the debate show with us sure. as well too yeah sounds awesome um, is there anything that you wanna let people know about you're working on right now before we let them go um, well I, I have a feature film that's in post production right now yep. starring Richard Harmon and uh, Sarah Thompson it's a sci-fi horror film nice and um, should be finishing that up in the next couple months okay and uh, yeah, my short film, which I mentioned at yep. Toronto After Dark, October twenty fifth, uh, it'll be making its uh, its Canadian premiere. Send me all your stuff for it, and I'll pull it, I'll plug it into oh, the cool. episode. Yeah, I have a trailer for the return. Uh, Please, that's the, yeah. that's the sci fi horror feature film that I'm working on. I'll send you that. That's fucking Great. perfect. Um, so everybody listening, again, this has been BJ Vero, local stunt performer from Winnipeg, Manitoba. I'm Michael Petro, Martin Navarro, and Mark Cowell, and we're gone. Oh, that was fun. How long was that? Hour forty five. That's good. 